Okay, so we are back with more Phoenix, right? Uh, so far, internet has been behaving itself, so we'll just continue on with the stream. So last we left off, we completed the first two cases of uh, Justice for All, the second game in the series, and we're about to start a brand new case. And, uh, hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's a case. It is a case. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. I, I think the investigation portion of it is at least somewhat interesting, but I think it'll become quickly apparent why this case is uh, probably not in the top 10 of most people's lists. But we'll, we'll leave it there. We don't want to taint the perception too badly. Let's see how the case stands on its own as I boot it up. So we're going to go ahead and pause the music before we jump into things. thinking about it come on once you boot up we'll uh, hop in there we go hopefully it'll behave itself there we go so episode three turn about big top part one the investigation begins Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show. Prepare to witness a man who has mastered the wonder of flight. The world's greatest magician, the one, the only, Maximilian Galactica. Here we go, chat, flying around. I think it says Barry Big Circus in English down there. Sure, all references to real circus names, I believe. December 26, 8, 12 p.m., Barry Big Circus, Circus Entrance. Apparently we have another Christmas-ish case. Oh, wow, and that was like being in a dream. I haven't even caught my breath yet. <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it, Pearly? It was great. There was a dancing bear and a tiger that jumped through a ring of fire and an elephant that rode a giant ball. Listen, they're not going to show us this. They're not going to show us this. He got erased from existence, I wish. Not to mention the guy who flew through the air. Oops, she's got the little jumping animation. For a moment there, she almost looked normal. Maya says, yeah, Max Gal Galactica, he was absolutely fabulous. Huh? What? Max? Max Galactica, the world's greatest magician. A magician? A magician? No, a magician. Um, Mr. Nick. Huh? What is it, Pearls? Does magic have anything to do with channeling spirits? I don't think it has anything to do with channeling things, Phoenix. You don't know about magic, do you, Pearls? I'm sorry. I braved the winter cold and took Pearls to see the circus. It's been six months since that terrible incident in Crane Village. It's during that trying time that I met Pearls. Did he have any other cases in between, or...? Thankfully, she seems to be recovering from it. Is returning to her normal self. Ah, uh, it's time to go. You're right. We can't miss the last train. Pearls, you remembered the train. Of course I did. But I don't really understand what everyone means by express train. Well, Nick, see you later. I'll come by to help clean in the office. It's got to be spotless for the new year. Don't worry about it, really. You're going to visit Mr. Nick on New Year's? Maybe. I'm glad you will get to spend your New Year's with your special someone. But Pearly, look, it's time to go. Happy New Year, Mr. Nick. Happy New Year. Really hope it will turn out that way. It's Phoenix, right? Of course it won't. December 28th, 9.12 a.m. Right in company law offices. 
Well, today wraps it up for this year. Hope I can finish cleaning this place in one day. The phone rings. Dot 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 beep. Hello? This is the writing company. Nick! It's t t terrible! Ah, uh, Maya. Perfect timing. Things are terrible here, too. Huh? The office is a terrible mess. I have to clean it up. What are you talking about? Um, my dirty office. What are you talking about? Listen, Nick, you have to turn on the TV. The TV? Now let's check in at the scene. Huh? What happened? Thank you. We're here at Berry Big Circus. The Berry Big Circus has become the center of a sensational murder. The scene has created quite a stir among the throngs of uh, of on excuse me, throngs of excited onlookers. The very I mean, the Berry Big Circus. Oh, way to give away the pun there. That's the circus we went to, right? They're saying that there was a murder. Yeah, they arrested him too. A arrested who? Max. They arrested Max Galactica. Maximilian Galactica. Ants call him Max. A popular magician who could fly through the sky at will. This just happened. Why are we getting a recap here? Maya said she was a huge fan of Max. Alright, Nick. I'll see you in two hours at the detention center. Huh? What? See you there. Still got plenty of time to clean up your office later. W what? Beep. Well, I guess I'll examine the poster. Most of the newest member of the Steel Samurai universe. Mine went out and bought it right away. She's a sucker for all things Steel Samurai. Why they're even giving the new guy his own movie? I just know why he's gonna drag me out to see it with her. There's a giant building just outside the window. It's the Gatewater Hotel, high class luxury hotel. So recently it had been a normal business class hotel. Charlie, a quite decorative plan. Wouldn't mind his help cleaning this place up. My desk. Since I don't have time to sit, it's unusually clean. Difficult looking legal books stand in a formidable row. They mock me. I don't mind dumping some of these off at the used bookstore. No, no, but that might not be such a good idea. Oh, Phoenix. Let's go to the detention center. December 28th, 11, 19 a.m. Detention center, visitor's room. What are they talking about? Why did they arrest Max? You're asking the wrong man on that one, Maya. Maybe he used his magical skills to deal death with a sleight of hand. Maximilian Galactica would never do such a thing. Fabulous. What the young lady just said was absolutely fabulous. What a clever girl. Such a fabulous understanding of events. What's with all this fabulous talk? He threw cards at us, chat. Quick, arrest him. Max is here. Welcome to the visitor's room. It's Max, Nick, look! It's the real Maximilian Galactica. All right, sweetie, pick a card, any card. He called me sweetie. Oh, Nick. <laughs> Time's running out, sweetie. Pick a card, any card. Uh, uh, th this one. Uh-huh. I thought you would pick that one, sweetie. The Ace of Hearts. Oh, he got it, he got it! Nick, look, he got it! What can I say, sweetie? You've stolen one of my most valued possessions. One of Maximilian's Galactica's hearts. Max. Oh. Well, time to make this an absolutely fabulous time. Max, you should let Nick pick a card. Ugh. I don't want to steal one of his hearts. And you are? Oh, how silly of me. You must be Sweetie's driver. Her driver? Whatever. Hurry up and pick a card. Any card. Um, I want this one. So, Sweetie, let's be honest here. You came to this visitor's room to visit me, didn't you? Yes, I'm your biggest fan. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much. Hey, um, what about my card? Think of it as a souvenir. Dot 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 from Phoenix. Well, Nick, I think it's time to get to work. What's the matter, Nick? Why are you looking at the ceiling? I was just thinking about what I should have for lunch. Sweetie, drop Porcupine Head over there. 
shower me with your attention, okay? Oh, oh yes. Absolutely fabulous. Absolutely cringe inducing. Oh, Phoenix, Phoenix with the witty comeback as always, Chad. Let's examine our favorite character in the game. The scarred monitor is the visitor's room. He's so quiet, you could forget he was even there. He wasn't watching everything. It's pushed up against the wall, kind of like a magnet on a refrigerator. Smile, you're on candid camera. Max keeps sneaking glances up at the security camera on the wall. What if he's still trying to be a star? Let's talk to him before we present anything. Go to Max Galactica. Max, I was hoping you'd tell me a little bit more about yourself. Fabulous! I think we should get to know each other better too. Why don't you come sit next to me? Uh, I don't think she could do that. Um, there's a big piece of security glass between us. Sweet Jeebus, what in the world? Sweet Jeebus, there we go. If only I could use magic, then I can make this wall disappear. Okay, I was just double checking. There is one achievement I can get. So I'll make sure to do that, but not right this moment. What is this guy talking about? Anyways, lately you've become awfully famous, haven't you, Max? Max Maximilian to you, porcupine head. Get it straight. Jeez, people nowadays, they get their panties on a bunch over nothing. Anyway, Maximilian, you won a very prestigious award recently, did you not? I did indeed. It was fabulous! I won the Magician's Grand Prix, held by the Association of International Magicians. It's an award that recognizes that I am the most fabuloso of fabulous world magicians. There was a trophy, and a bust. It was a fa- I mean, it was an amazing day. Wow, that's incredible. Isn't it? I'm certifiably the greatest magician in the world. I'm going to guess he didn't win a trophy for his- or most modest magician. Go Barry Big Circus now. You're signed to an exclusive contract with the Barry Big Circus, correct? That's the long and short of it. You sure do your research, sweetie. I'm impressed. You just can't watch a magician on TV, you know. Magic is so fabulous. You have to see it with your own eyes, sweetie. You're right. You're so right. However, the circus. It's a dinosaur, a thing of the past. Nowadays, no one even cares about what goes on in there. Huh? What do you mean? That's why I signed the contract. That's why you signed the contract? Thanks to me, the Berry Big Circus is fabulously popular. People come out in droves to catch a glimpse of the magic of Max Galactica. I revived the dinosaur that is the circus. But to me, it was just another magic trick. Isn't it wonderful, sweetie? E yes I made all the crusty old circus performances obsolete. But I kind of like the circus performances. Maya looks a bit down. Let's go to what happened. Tell me what happened at the very big circus. Ah, oh, last night, the ringmaster was murdered. The ringmaster? You mean Russell Berry? Someone smashed him over the head, I hear. He slumped over on the ground. Even though it was the middle of the night, police presence was fabulous. Police questioned me at length. Questioned you about what? About everything. I was the last one to see the ringmaster before he was murdered. I saw him last evening in his room. So then, why were you arrested? Arrested? Don't make an anthill into a mountain, sweetie. They just wanted to consult me... Consult with me on matters, that's all. Nick, I don't think Max understands how serious this is. She's right. I think I should shock him back to reality. 
Let's talk about the meeting with Russell. Before the murder, you met with the ringmaster? Uh-huh. What did you talk about? Things that aren't for your ears. Maya, would you please ask him? What did you talk about with the ringmaster, Max? It was nothing. Small talk, really. Just having a chat about my salary. Salary? I'm the one bringing in the crowds. I think that I should be compensated as such. You agree, don't you? Well, if you signed a contract, why would you be able to negotiate like that? Oh well, whatever. Bad contract, I guess. Y yes That's all you talked about? Of course. It was a fabulous chat. Uh-oh, chat. Three locks say otherwise. Just fabulous. I mean, ugh. Now he's got me saying it. What's the matter, Nick? You look all bent out of shape. Let's present him the badge. What is that badge? Is it used at a disappearing act? I'm not a magician, Max. I'm an attorney. An attorney? Then why are you wasting your time talking to me? Oh, I'm sure most of chat questions that as well. He isn't wasting his time. Max, you're... Okay, okay, relax, sweetie. Just a little over-anxious, I think. She went first. Anyways, I've been curious about something for a while now. What's that? Why do you keep looking at me with such a sad look on your face, sweetie? But because you've been arrested for murder! Oh, don't be ignorant. They wouldn't arrest someone like me. Why is that? Obviously because I'm the fabulous Maximilian Galactica. So? I'm the very big star of the very big circus. And that means... I'm rich. I'm paid fabulous sums. Which means what? Max? Quit joking around. You gotta be pulling my magic wand. The police aren't really serious about this, are they? They don't arrest people as a joke. Uh-oh, he's looking nervous, chat. Look at Max, he's crushed. Well, he needed to wake up and smell the coffee. We think to ourselves, this is serious business. Yeah, <laughs> mm. We're not gonna question what he means by the magic wand. Um, um, yes. Poor Q, I mean, sir, you're a lawyer, right? Huh? Oh, yeah. I I'm an attorney. Please help me! I didn't kill nobody! Oh, he's crying away his, like, eyeliner. Ew. Didn't kill nobody? I may be more spoiled than a hog in a hamburger mud pit. Oh, that is a... Uh, that is a phrase. But a killer? That's insane. I... I... I could never. But Max? I swear. I just wanted to pay off my daddy's debt. He's back on the farm. Okay, okay. I'll take your case. But really? Really. Uh, thank you much. Y'all sure are nice folks. Um, Max? Yes? What's your real name? It's Billy Bob jo It's really Billy Bob, seriously. It's Billy Bob Johns. Wow, he got he got the hillbilly name for sure. Maya with the double take of the dot 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 dot. What's the matter, Maya? He's really just a country bumpkin. Ahem. I must apologize for not being my absolutely fabulous self just now, sweetie. Uh huh. Mr. Attorney. Yes. A few minutes ago, you took one of my cards, didn't you? Um, now that he mentions it, I did take a card. It was the Ten of Hearts, right? What? Well, how'd he... He got it right again. What can I say? You too. You've stolen some of my most valued possessions. Ten of Maximilian Galactica's hearts. You sure do have a lot of hearts, don't you? <laughs> I'm putting my faith in you, sweetie. He didn't just call me sweetie, did he? 
All right, let's make this an absolutely fa fabulous case. Come on, Nick. Let's go back to the law offices. December 28th, law offices. All right, got a lot of things we have to look into. No time for slacking. Let's get going. Okay. What's the matter? You seem down. Maximilian Galactica. Who'd have guessed he was a country bumpkin? Okay, chat. So this is for an achievement. Let's present his profile to her. Max is 21. A fabulous magician famed for his aerial illusions. Accused of murder. What's the matter? Been acting strange for a while now. Max. Just some country bumpkin. So? What does that matter? He's still a famous magician, right? I guess. But his real name his real name is Billy Bob Johns. Yikes. Poor guy's got three first names. I guess that is pretty odd. Oh well, if a big star can do it, then you could you should pretend to be exotic too, Nick. Big star? Max Galactica is a pretty big name. Anyways, what do you think about Naruhoto A. Raido? No, 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 uh, um, uh, what's the A stand for? The A stands for attorney. I'll think about it. Anyway, I don't think there's anything we could do here, so let's go to the circus entrance. December 28th, very big circus, circus entrance. We're here again. Yep, but this time we're here for work. As Phoenix thinks to himself, it hasn't been that long since the crime, so the police are still on the scene. Let's find someone who might know something about what happened. Sounds like a plan. Look, look, it's Max. Even when you don't want to see him, poof, he's right in front of you. Sure, the sign says Barry Big Circus. Look around, it might as well be Cirque de Galactica. The stars on his cheek sure are dreamy. But I draw a star on your cheek, Nick. You got a marker. Nah, nah, it's, it's all right. The streamers do a nice job introducing the circus performers. Maximilian Galactica and his comical comrades. You know, I don't really see too many streamers nowadays, do you? You're right. I haven't seen one in ages. But they stopped using them due to little kids climbing up to the top. Um, I don't think that was why. This is the box office where they sell all the tickets for the circus. They also sell programs. I got to buy one when we came to the circus last time. Then why don't you buy one now? Hmm, sounds like a plan. Oh no, looks like I forgot my wallet. You want me to buy it for you, just ask me already. You know I'd never do that to you, Nick. a snack stand. They have hot dogs, hamburgers, and drinks. Not to mention candy and popcorn. They've even got snow cones. Who would eat snow cones in the middle of winter? Nick, you think we could buy some snow cones? Look around. Tons of snow piled up around here. Yay! Oh, wait a second. There's no syrup, though. I want syrup. Hopefully she doesn't notice that discolored snow in the corner. That's not syrup. Oh, there we go. Crude humor. The berry big top is so b <clears throat> enormous. Yep. One look at the huge tent looming over you and you realize this is the circus. I know, I know. It really gets your blood pumping, doesn't it? Nick, the entrance is right here. Maya, the circus is closed today. No clowns, no elephants, no shows. I know that. Nick, you can get your picture taken with Dolly the Elephant. There's no Dolly. Not today. I know that too. Oh well. Just have to take a picture with whoever I stumble across. Ugh. Not like we're here on business or anything. Let's move inside. Uh, we'll do Lodging House since it's first, I guess. December 28th, Lodging House. Plaza. Seems to be a dorm where all the circus performers stay. Really? So we might run into the stoogy clown here, right? He's so kooky. 
I don't know who's saying this, so I don't know what voice to give, but it's all oh, it's you two is the voice. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. How is it you guys always seem to know when I'm working a crime scene, pal? Because you're always working, Detective. Well, I'd rather not be always working. But with crime, you don't make your own hours. If I have to be at the circus anyway, I want to see the lion tamer and the tightrope. However, no matter where I go, the show is always the same. Dead body, stage left. Nick, Nick, he complained. <laughs> That's a rarity. Let's get back to business now, okay? Let's ask him about tomorrow's trial. Do you know who will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow? Of course, it'll be Miss Von Karma. Uh, she isn't going to hit me with her whip again, is she? Chat, let's all roll our eyes. Oh, 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 don't worry, Phoenix. She totally got over her whipping people in court phase. <laughs> Big eye roll. What do you have to worry about? You only have to see her in court. When she shows up the precinct, the sound of that whip never ends, pal. Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure Miss Von Karma is really interesting and all, but there's someone else I'd rather talk about. Like who? Like Mr. Edgeworth, of course. You know, Nick's true rival, Miles Edgeworth. She gave up the whip in favor of the flail. Maybe she got an upgrade. You're right, Dango. What in the world happened after I went back home? M Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't heard what happened to him? Nick won't tell me. Well, to be honest, I'm not at liberty to tell you either. Let's just say he's not around anymore. He's not around? Nick. What does he mean Mr. Edgeworth isn't around? Exactly what he said. He's not around. Edgeworth is gone. Don't say his name again, okay? N nick So let's ask about the ringmaster. The, ring the ringmaster of the circus was murdered, wasn't he? Yup. Last night around 10 p.m. He died outside in the cold. Pretty sad way to go out if you ask me, pal. It was rather cold. This is the scene of the crime, pal. The money was found right over there. Right about where you're standing now. Ah! Oh, surprised you, didn't I? I'm not laughing. Excuse me, but do you mind telling me what happened to the victim? He was killed by a blow to the noggin, pal. Yeah! It's pretty clear-cut as far as murders go. He was discovered quickly. But... But... There's just one thing that doesn't quite fit. Huh. There's always seems to be something that doesn't quite fit. Let's ask about something unusual. What was this one thing that didn't quite fit? The thing you mentioned earlier. Footprints, pal. Footprints. Footprints? Look at this picture of the crime scene. What's this? This wooden box under the body. No clue, pal. Some forensics experts took it back and are examining it now. And, and, what is so mysterious about the footprints? Whoa, calm down now. Take a good look at the footprints in this picture. The victim's footprints are on the scene. That's right, pal. The problem is... The killer's footprints aren't there. Bingo! Where did the killer come from, and where did the killer run off to? Obviously, there's no way the killer committed this crime while flying. A flying culprit? That's when something just clicked in my head. Just, there's no way! Flying is impossible. That's right, flying is impossible. Absolutely impossible. <laughs> What's with the hollow laugh, pal? I meant nothing by it, pal. Better stated, it means I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I get some info about Max out of him. Prime photo added to the court record. Uh, 
Let's present our badge. Come on, you flashed that badge at me so many times, it doesn't work anymore. Why don't you try wearing a different badge every now and then? Well, I do have a Steel Samurai badge with me. How about that one? Only wear it if Detective Gumshoe carries a Steel Samurai Police badge. Then it's a deal. Wear that Detective Gumshoe is that very badge. What? Don't look at me like that. You're making me nervous. Uh, let's present Max. Looks like Max is the most unpopular guy in the circus tent. <laughs> Are you telling me him saying fabulous and talking up himself for like presumably hours on end is unpopular with people? Who would have thought, chat? You know what they say. A bad attitude follows you everywhere. Hmm. He's a bit arrogant, but he didn't seem that bad. Really, Phoenix? Okay. But just because someone has a bad attitude doesn't make them a criminal. It's not just his attitude. I've got proof, pal. Huh? He left something at the scene of the crime. One of his magician's trademarks. An incredibly well-made silk hat. Well, it does have very classy decorative elements. Silk hat added to the court record. Mid-order hat that is the symbol of Max's fabulousness found at the crime scene. Max uses a cloak, silk hat, and white roses as his signature symbols. Pretty mundane, aren't they? Who cares if they're mundane? At least they're easy to understand. I must have hit a nerve. That's what he said. Who said? The eyewitness. Huh? To tell us about the eyewitness. The eyewitness. Um, so about the eyewitness. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you know I'm not going to tell you about that. That's the prosecution's trump card. Hmm. Oh, well. Oh, I just remembered. What? I forgot to mention that you two are barred from entering that lodging house. Huh? Why is that? Oh, no reason. Just something I remembered to tell you. It must be because that's where the eyewitness is. Let's check it out. Don't you dare, pal. Let's examine the surroundings here. There's some evidence under the tarp over there. Hey, watch it, pal! The killer's behind that tarp! Ah! Oh, ho, ho. gotcha! I was just kidding! Uh! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Anyway, let's examine things. This year, I finally won an air conditioner! What? You didn't have an air conditioner? Did you ride your Triceratops to work too? What do you mean by one an air conditioner? You didn't buy it? I can't afford one of those things. But I got lucky and won it as a door prize at the annual police Christmas party. They really pay you peanuts, don't they? Peanuts? I don't even get paid enough for peanut butter, let alone peanuts. Oof. Let's examine the pole, I guess. The safety lights around the circus are kept on all night long. So they should have been on at the time of the murder. So he's saying the murder took place in the light? How strange. How strange indeed. Hmm. This is the only place the snow has been trounced upon. The murderer was slappy leaving all these prints all over. No, 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 no. We're the ones who left the prints. An investigation can be a messy thing sometimes. What? I also slipped and fell in that spot over there. The other detectives all got a good laugh when the prosecutor whipped me. Thank God there was all the snow around to bring down the swelling. It's great to know that the police aren't worried about preserving the evidence. Okay, I don't think we can do anything else here. Let's go to Moe's room. Hmm. I'm still thinking about their... their voices i have two of the voices down i have to think about how to voice this character we can actually see a picture of mo in the background if i'm looking at that correctly he's supposed to be like a comedian i'm gonna be honest with you chat i don't think he made me laugh <laughs> i don't think he did december 28th lodging house first floor mo's room i wonder whose room this is the name tag on the door says Mo on it. Guess he's not here. Wow, it's a real mess in here. My room's probably worse, though. 
Oh well. I give up. We'll have to come back later. The dog shoes down here. Awesome. Look at these shoes. They're great. Forget the shoes. Check out the great gag banana peel. You sure it wasn't Mo's snack after lunch? Are you blind? How many scratches there are from people slipping on it? I would say based off the outfits back here, we found the uh, game's faux Newman. All those clown costumes lined up like that. I don't know about you, but it's creepy. Look at the collection he's got. It's incredible. Must be a collection of clown costumes from around the world. Oh, I almost forgot. What is it now? Gee, better not want me to try one of those on. I was thinking of starting a costume collection myself. I'll call it World Spirit Channels. We could display it in our office. In our office? As soon as you start paying the bills, you can say that. Look at the bed. Mo's got an excellent pair of pajamas. They known his bed in an excellent manner. What? Those are pajamas? You mean he goes to bed dressed as a clown? Ew. Okay, let's examine more of the room. Trash. Oops. Desk. Mo seems to be a voracious reader. Look at all the hard books he has here. Clowns for dummies, the jokes on you, treat your peons right, and the classic, funny jokes are funny. If he's reading those, doesn't that mean he's not good? Wow, Mo's very studious. The joke's on you. Huh. Tee <laughs> clown equipment is so funny looking. He's got a balancing ball, a unicycle. He's even got a trampoline. But uh, they're all broken. Maybe he's just a little too excited during practice. Who knows with that guy. Maybe that's part of the gag? Why does he have like carrots on a string? I just noticed that actually. What the? There's a string of carrots here. How strange. Carrots seem to come in all different shapes. Weird. I can't tell if Mo just likes carrots. He's using them for some sort of gag. Like the hole in the ceiling. Look at the ceiling. Looks like someone punched a hole in it. You're right. Wonder what happened. Hmm. I don't even want to imagine what goes on in here. Okay, so I think we examined everything except for the window. Nick, you can see the scene of the crime from here. Gee, Chad, I wonder who the witness will be. You can even tell that the ground has been disturbed. Right in front of this window, about 30 feet away. Guess it wouldn't have been strange for someone to have seen the crime from here. Anyway, I think we found all we can find. So let's move. Hmm. Did I miss something is the question. Hmm. Oh. The other place to go, the big top. December 28th, Barry Big Circus, Big Top. The Phoenix, oh, excuse me. The circus stage sure doesn't look this small from out in the audience. Wow, this is where they all perform, isn't it? Nick, do some somersaults. I'm not doing any somersaults. Why not? Look like you'd be great at it. Why do I look like I'd be great at somersaults? Grrr, says unknown voice, presumably the lion. Huh, Nick? It wasn't me. Grrr. Rawr. Oh, tiger, apparently. I would have thought, given that they mentioned lion tamer earlier and there's a giant lion head, that it would have been a lion. Silly me, of course it was a tiger. T -t 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 tiger! Uh, he -he He's coming this way. Grrr. Grrr. Ah! Game over. <laughs> Nick, you're too young to die. Nick! Stay, stay, heal! Grrr. I'm still here. I I'm not dead yet. N Nick, Nick, are you okay? <laughs> Scared you, didn't I? Oh. 
That's not who I thought it was. Okay. Well, time to change up the voice a little bit. Never mind. I think I'm thinking of a different character. So let's see. Hmm. She does kind of look like Princess Jolanda again from uh, <laughs> Valkyrie Profile. Regent is such a cute tiger, isn't he? What's the matter? You two sure are quiet. No, what's the matter, me? Ninik, he almost died there. Huh, he wasn't anywhere close to getting hurt, let alone dying. This little tar tiger hardly ever bites people. And besides, people normally never get to play with a wild tiger, right? So if you think about it, you're actually really lucky. Huh? You agree, don't you? I guess. Well, well, what do you get? What do you mean you guess? How are you agreeing with her? Woohoo! Your costume. Huh? It's cute. I want to try it on. Your costume? You mean my clothes? You don't mind letting me try it on, right? Uh, I guess not. Really? <laughs> You're the best. Wow. The table turns quickly on that one. So much for the tiger thing. Oh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm Regina Berry, the renowned animal tamer of the Berry Big Circus. My name's Maya Fay. I'm a spirit medium. Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. When you put us up to an animal tamer, I bet we look really odd. Nice to meet you. Uh, likewise. Anyway, let's examine the room. Look, that's where Max comes out during the show. I've got to admit, that was a pretty cool effect. We're planning for me to start coming out of the line during the show. That's great, Regina. Yeah, I'll ride on Regent's back and jump out of the lion's mouth. I want to try it too. I'll ride on Nick's back and jump out of the lion's mouth. Sometimes I wonder about this girl. Ah, oh, a ladder. It's just a step ladder. So I think this is part of an ongoing achievement. We need to play all the games and we have to look at every single ladder. What's the difference? They do the same thing, right? I think you should stick with the basic facts of the matter. Oh. Uh, okay. It's not even worth arguing with her on this one. There doesn't seem to be anything here that can help us. Not a single clue. You know I've been meaning to ask you. What exactly do you mean when you say clue? What are you looking for? A uh, bloody chainsaw, for instance? Well, there's definitely not one of those here. Rope. Hey, it's rope! Probably for tightrope walking. That's a bit strange. There weren't any tightrope walkers in the show when we saw it. Hmm. The seats are kind of far away, don't you think? They are. It also means there's a lot of people that can fit in the big top. He's right. We could fit 500 people into a show. 500? That's amazing. Flying around above that many people is a real rush. Well, speaking of which, should we get her profile? Regina Berry, age 16. The idol of Berry Big Circus and daughter to Russell Berry, the ringmaster. At least that's what Max said. Whoa, those lights are huge. I love lights. Whenever I appear under the spotlight, everyone claps for me. That's because everyone knows that you're cute. No, I'm not cute. You're cute. Me? Of course. I'm sure you'd make an incredible heroine. Really? You think so? Nick, did you hear that? Me, a heroine. What about Nick, Regina? Hmm... Nick? He's no hero, is he? Ouch. Thanks a lot, Maya. There's like the steel cage for doing like motorcycle tricks. I don't think there's anything else I could examine here, though. So I guess we should get on with the interrogation. Let's ask about what happened. Hey, Regina. What do you know about what happened last night? You mean the murder? Uh-huh. My dad was murdered. 
she says while sparkling. Oh, I see. Wait, well, what did she just say? So, the ringmaster was your... Yep, the ringmaster was my dad. I'm so sorry about what happened to him. How do you say you're sorry, huh? Anyways, everyone was, was here practicing last night. Even your dad? Yes, everyone was here. We finished up around 10 p.m. After that, everyone went off on their own. I was the only one who, who stayed around here. Why did you do that? I was playing with Regent. Regent? So she was with that beast. That's when the police showed up. When they took me to check things out, Dad was dead. For someone whose father was just murdered. She seems awfully perky. Wish she would tell us more about her dad. Uh, we'll do that soon. That's incredible that you're an animal tamer. If you say so. It has to be really scary. Scary? Why? Huh? Regent isn't scary. He's cute. Ever since Leon died, Regent has been my best friend. Leon? Oh, like the lion? Yes. Leon the lion. Leon the lion and Regent and Regina. Interesting name choices. Leon, he died? Yes, actually he was killed. My dad killed him. Well, that certainly took a turn. What? Why did he do that? I'm not sure why he did it. It's tough not to get charmed when she looks at you with those innocent eyes. Um, she's really weird. I don't know what you're talking about, Phoenix. Can we present her dad? Oh, that is a mustache. What is that mustache and hair combo? I feel like they took an image of somebody and they put on, like, joke... Like, cosmetics. <laughs> they put on, like, the fake mustache. And they put just, like, a little, little teeny portion of a wig. That does not fit the character very well. Victim and ringmaster of the Barry Big Circus, Regina Barry's father. Let's present. After practice was over, Dad went right back to his room. His room? Yes. That door right over there leads to the ringmaster's room. Guess he eats his mustache? I think so. It's like not even remotely attached to his face. It's crazy. <laughs> hmm. I don't know why, but he went off to his room in a hurry. I wonder what happened. The ringmaster's room. Probably a good idea to check it out myself. Okay, I don't think there's anything else we could do here, so let's go to the ringmaster's room. December 28th, the big top ringmaster's room. This was the ringmaster's room? Yes, this room belonged to the victim, which means this must be where Max met the ringmaster last night. Now that you mention it, that is what he said. Wonder what? Hmm, that's an interesting poster. Ah, it's a poster of Max. I want it, I want it, Nick, I want it. I want to get out of here. Well, I'm going to look at the suspicious envelope first. The table for guests. Some paper scattered on top. Oh, look at this. Max's salary is written on this piece of paper. Yikes! What is it? I didn't know that a magician... Uh, the salary is incredible. It looks like she's ready to pass out from shock. How much is it? How much is it? Th th that much? Incredible, huh? You could say that again. This must be the paper they used to negotiate Max's salary. The ringmaster signed and dated it. What's the matter, Nick? Max definitely got a raise. But this document is dated a week ago. Hmm. Got an enormous raise one week ago. Ringmaster's papers added to the court record. Let's look at the table directly. This was the table he used when visitors came to see him. Ew, there's mud caked on the table. Someone with terrible manners must have put their shoes up on the table. Nick, don't even think about it. I wasn't. How one coot do you think I am anyway? Let's look at the trophies. Nick, look at all the cute trophies. Indeed. Let's look at all the awards the circus has won. Like, all-county quiz champions. Ringmasters Association Mini Golf Master. 
Beer Belly Balloon Bounce Champ, Pet Grooming Grand Prix. Wow, the Ringmaster was multi talented in ways I could never have imagined. Beer Belly, huh? What's this poster? There's a lot of posters here, don't you think? There, there are indeed. Hmm. So many posters, they aren't likely to miss one, are they? Oh, yeah? Supposed to be the honest ones around here. But, but, I didn't even notice that I took one. Uh, I already swiped one. There we go. Thieving again, chat. <laughs> You're incorrigible, you know that? Max G promo poster added to the court record, emblazoned with Max's three famous symbols. Look at the pictures at the top. Nick, look at all the photos lined up on the wall. It's like a guided tour of the circus's history. This is so cool. It seemed like there were so many happy memories. Maybe we should do this sort of thing at our office. We could put up pictures of all the clients who've been found not guilty. And what if we had a client who was found guilty? Um, we'll just pretend like they didn't exist. How's that? Nick, they've got me thinking about losing cases. Why'd you do that? Look at all the stars on this poster. Must have been the poster they used to promote their public appearances. Posters are the way to go, aren't they? What do you mean? We should make posters to promote our law firm. Spine-tingling legal action. Mind-numbing legalese. You will say, wow. Or perhaps, hold it. Don't miss out on a stunning life or death courtroom thrill ride. With those taglines, our law firm would sink faster than the Titanic. Let's take a look at his suit. You may not know this, but they call this a tailcoat. They call this the face of someone who already knew that. Hmm. What? A scarf of white paper is sticking out of the coat pocket. Huh? Where? Where? Calm down, Maya. Can't just go rummaging through people's coats. Aww. This makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. It's because you are, Maya. Oh, we actually can't take that right now? Well, I could see two other characters we have not seen yet in the circus. So we could see the ventriloquist, and we could see another unknown character. But I'm sure his role will become apparent as we get further. All these frames look the same. They look almost like thank you cards. Looks like every year the ringmaster made donations to charity. To the, ro to the Robot Clown Research Center. Robot Clown? I'm sorry, what? You're kidding, right? What? It may be perfectly... They may be a perfectly reputable charity in the field of advanced tomfoolery. Oh, okay. Guess he's making a joke. This is where the ringmaster applied his makeup. It's quite a collection of the most... Oh, I must let this said understand. Let me try this again. It's quite a collection of the most understated colors. Shocking pink, for example. This one says it's 100% all-natural organic mascara. What does that even mean? This one says sensitive enough for a baby, strong enough for a mime. Ringmaster must have been really concerned about skincare. Very metrosexual. I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting her to say that phrase. Thanks, Maya? Question mark. Let's go to the desktop. This is strange. Everything else looks nice, but this desk looks old and cheap. There's a really big photo on the desk. It's a picture of Regina and her father, the ringmaster. It was the tailcoat. The tailcoat was the murderer. In the pocket, it's just a little thing that just says, I did it, signed the tailcoat. You're right, Dango. You're just, if only we had looked in the tailcoat pocket, the mystery would have been solved. He really loved her, didn't he? Regina was lucky to have such a wonderful father. Okay, I think I've examined everything possible in this room. I'm just sweeping again. Yeah, I think we're good. Hmm. Let's go back to circus entrance. Huh. Hmm. What am I missing? Oh, oh, actually, there's one thing I could do. Uh, well, technically two things. 
What if I present the profile of Russell Berry to Gumshoe? Let's start with this, and we'll do that to the witness as well. Found affidavits for most of the performers at the circus. Certainly a strange bunch of characters. You don't say. Well, not stranger than you, I suppose. Oh, we got burned by Gumshoe. That was cold. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just messing around. Alright, we did get bonus dialogue at least. Let's present her father? Oh, no, 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 we did that already. I'm sorry, we gotta present, uh, Max. It's Max! Hey, where is Max now anyways? Y you don't know? Nope! He's been arrested. He's charged with the murder of your father. It's okay, Nick and I will help him. Max isn't the guy, is he? I, I mean, the criminal? Of course he's not. I'm worried about so many things right now. Hmm, like what? <laughs> That's it? She just ha-ha-ha's? I guess we'll ask what's on your mind. I guess that we unlocked that just then. Regina, what's the matter? What's on your mind? Yeah, I was gonna say, the courtroom already has a whole bunch of clowns in it on both sides of the, uh, the courtroom. We're now just adding clowns as witnesses, literally. She goes, <laughs> I'll tell you, Maya, but just you. Ah. Um, well, mumble mumble. What? Really? And then, mumble mumble. Oh my, that's incredible, Regina. Come on, Nick. There's no reason to pout. Don't worry about me. Regina told me that someone professed their love to her. Professed their love? Not only that, it was Maximilian Galactica. Um... Oh yeah, Chad, here's where we go into the why. Japan why. So he's 21 and she's 16. I don't know, chat. That's just... That doesn't sit well with me. That really doesn't. I don't, I don't like that as a fact point. I really don't. Yeah, big yikes. I wonder how many people have stolen one of his hearts anyway. And then, on this exact same day, another person professed their love for her as well. What? Who was it? Someone named Trillo. Trillo? Oh, no. I already know it's Trilloquist. I know it's Vantriloquist. I already know the name pun. I know who it is. Oh, this character. I, I think I know how to voice the characters for those two. I'm still not sure about Mo though. I have to think about Mo. <laughs> I have to think about a voice that is really unfunny and distinguish it a little bit from the other characters. But if Chad has suggestions, I'm all for it. When we get to him. We haven't seen Mo yet, but we will soon. Apparently, he's a tenor who sings in the circus. Hmm. I haven't met him yet. Regina seems to be quite the hit with the men in the circus. You must have some sort of strange power over them. <laughs> You'll voice him for you? Thank you, Dango. You're not kidding. Two people in one day. Even I want to profess my love for her. Me too. She's so cute. Ew! Ill, hope ill, no, no, ill, 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 Phoenix, no. <laughs> Gross. Let's leave. Disgusting. December twenty eighth, Barry Big Circus, Circus entrance. Huh? Hey, Nick, look over there. What? There's someone over there. I excuse me. Oh, this character. Hello? Dot 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 dot. Wow, he sure is a quiet one. Excuse me? Uh, huh? M m me Yes, you work at the circus, don't you? N n no uh, I'm just your everyday average Joe. An average Joe who just happens to hang out at the circus? I don't think so. I I yes, I am. I I've got nothing to do with what's going on here. He's lying. Like any regular person would hang around the circus, dressed like that. I'm an attorney. My name is Phoenix Wright. 
I'm a spirit medium. My name is Maya. Well, I am, um, just happen to be, um, uh, pa passing by. I don't suppose you happen to be some kind of carny. No, 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 carny. I'm a p p p performer, actually. I'm a v v v ventriloquist. A ventriloquist? <laughs> I'm Benjamin w w w w w Woodbin. Your last name is Woodman. <laughs> yes, th th that, that, that's right. But everyone c c calls me b b b b b Ben. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's your alias, right? I believe they call it a stage name. Let's ask about what happened. Excuse me, Ben. Uh, uh yes, you mean me. About the murder. I'd like to talk to you about the details, if I may. But really, I I'm just a normal guy. I don't- no, 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 no. Uh, 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 This guy's so nervous, he's creeping me out. Nick, cheer up. Just try and smile. Would you mind telling us something about Max? Maximilian Galactica. M -m 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 Max? He, 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 he's... No, 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 very, no, 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 did he just say that Max is not very nice? Oh, uh, ow, oh, my, my head, 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 head hurts. Yikes, hope he's okay. Sounds like he just popped a gasket. Let's ask about ventriloquism. Ben, so you're a ventriloquist? Uh, I'm j j j just a, a r r regular g g guy. You already told us you were a ventriloquist. Oh, e e yes. Nick, don't yell at him. You can't do that. I can't help it. He's making me nervous. Ben, do you mind showing us some of your skills as a ventriloquist? Well, I, I, I right now my, my, p -p -p uh, 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 I will, uh, 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 he's contagious. Phoenix, that's just rude. All right, let's present the attorney badge. Do you mind taking a look at this? Uh, um, uh, I, 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 I guess we won't need to, to look at this after all. Uh, I don't know if he'll give us any information. He's 30. Ew. Ew. Wait a minute. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. If I'm following the plot so far, a 21 year old and also we're about the same age. Are, are professing love to Barry, who's 16, and now there's somebody that's 31 that likes the 16-year-old? Ew. Ew, this just gets worse. I definitely forgot part of this when I played this case. Would you mind taking a look at this? Um, okay. It doesn't have anything to say about those two, so we'll move on. Okay, since presumably I have nothing better to do, I'm gonna see if Mo is in Mo's room. Yeah, I forgot about that plot point, to be honest. Okay, so something's different in Mo's room. Blammo! I just, I have to think about his voice. I might change it slightly as we do it. Hmm. I'm just taking him in, chat. I don't look forward to voicing this character. Congratulations, you're the big wiener! The one million visitor to the room of Mr. Mo Curls, aka me! Earplugs must find earplugs. To celebrate this momentous occasion, would you care for an organic grape? Just one! Take it my joke right there! <laughs> I welch on giving you more than one. Um, no, no. If it was funny, it's your duty as a human being to laugh. People who don't laugh are usually last seen in Lansing. Catch my drift? I, I actually what Lansing? <laughs> I, I actually don't get it. Not on that one. Um, Maya. This is like some Fosse and Nightmare. I kind of agree with you there, Phoenix. 
Come on, it was funny. Clowns are always funny in my book. Don't think you made me laugh. In my book, they're just funny looking. You sure do have a great taste in clothes, girly. Look at that garb. You look just like Greta Garb. Oh. Ahaha. 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 I'm going home. No, Nick, you can't. You know, I can excuse a bad joke or two. But this dude keeps laughing at his own jokes. That's what I object to. Okay, okay, I get it. But you have to admit, he is kind of funny. No, he's not. Ugh. No, I don't have to admit that, because he isn't. <laughs> Very big circus. Could you please tell us more about the Very Big Circus? It's a very big story! Sure you got that kind of time. And the hits just keep on coming. <sighs> this circus has been in visitors for 20 years. We all performed under the guidance of the ringmaster, Russell Berry. 20 years? Wow! And working in the circus is never easy, especially nowadays. With movies, TV, and bowling, there's just too much competition. But, but, I love the circus. I love it too. That's why I've been here for 20 years. Work hard to keep the show running. No one sends in the clown... Oh, excuse me. No one sends in the clowns on us. Nick, he just made a joke. Laugh. Was that really a joke? Har, 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 har. The ringmaster was a real big shot in the circus world. Real class act. Even when there were no customers, Russell would use his own money to pay me. Because he knew that I had family to care for. He was happy to take care of his employees. I see. How can anyone do that to such a wonderful man? Go to what happened. Mo. Wiggity wiggity what? Wiggity wiggity? Oh my gosh. That was wiggity wiggity whack, I think is what he meant to say. Ugh. I'm sorry, Mo. Nick was born without a sense of humor. Well... You know, the game has made me laugh before. This character is just really painfully unfunny. Don't worry about it. How can you fault someone for being born that way? Let's talk about the murder. Hmm... Ah, uh, let's see. Must have taken place around 10 p.m. last night. After rehearsals were finished, I was tuckered out, so I came back here. After I went to bed, that's when I caught a peek of it. Caught a peek? Of the crime. Just as we suspected. This guy's the eyewitness to the crime. Let's ask about Russell Berry. The ringmaster was truly ahead of his time. Always add new elements to the show. New elements? When you've been a performer for a long time, your act starts getting a little stale. Hmm. I realize that even my act could get a bit long in the tooth. Sometimes my jokes could be a bit, um, old fashioned. Or just bad. I'm gonna go with just bad. A bit long in the tooth. But that make believer takes things too far. Make believer? That magician. The one who thinks he's all high and mighty. He had the gall to say to me, you're one of those funny types, right? What does he mean, one of those? Well, the joke's on him now. On him? Yep, he got on everyone's nerves. The day of the murder. Go ahead. Nope, no way. Just forget I said anything. I bet he's still hiding something about Max. Let's ask about what he witnessed. So you saw the crime. Do you mind telling me what you saw? Well, the police told me that I can't share my story with others. Don't say a word, pal. I'm just gonna have to let those lips stay zipped. That's not fair. I guess you're right. Maybe I can tell you a few details. But only if you get old stiff lips here to make with the funny. Stiff lips? Wait, do you mean me? Nick, you can do it. <clears throat> What's the matter? Just getting ready, okay. Do you know why I, Phoenix Wright, am a great lawyer? Because I'm right all the time. Maya dot dot dots. 
Mo dot dot dots. See, that scene was almost funny. At least his expectations are low. I wouldn't let him quit his day job. Yeesh. That guy's some slack. At least it was funnier than Chuckles over there. I actually kind of agree with Phoenix. The clown's jokes kind of suck. They're not even like funny puns or anything. They're just... They're just bad. Wasn't the greatest joke I've heard, but you did try. So I'll tell you what I saw. I'm sorry he's incapable of, be f of being funny, Mo. Oof. That night, once I tucked myself into bed, heard this amazing noise. It's incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. <coughs> Excuse me, chat. Once I heard it, I jumped out of bed. That's when I saw. <clears throat> Without a doubt. Without a question, it was that magician. <laughs> Excuse me. G chat, this doesn't feel incredibly staged. Committing the murder literally under the spotlight for everybody to see. <clears throat> and then suspiciously, the background image doesn't even show a face. Mm hmm. Is that Eggman? It is Eggman. We killed Eggman. That's all I saw. But it just proves how terrible that man actually is. He knows more about Max than he's letting on. Okay, the game has been hinting really strong. I should present the profile here. Hmm. Thinks he could kill the Ringmaster. It's only... It's only just that he should die too. Wow, that took a twist. Mo? Sorry. I crossed the line, but he truly is a disgusting human being. I mean, I kind of agree with him, but not for the reason he probably thinks. Why do you hate him so much? Let me tell you this one story. The morning before the murder, something terrible happened. Max Clunk bent right over the head as hard as he could. Then, the ventriloquist with the speech impediment? You should go to the cafeteria and investigate for yourselves. The cafeteria? Okay, now we have a new place to go to. That's promising. Let's just say gotta... There's gotta be something interesting in there. Ah, 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 yes. The very big circus is very big, isn't it? You always carry a map with you to get around. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, this is an atlas. Ah, Oh, I killed myself, really. I'm dying here. Coronary, coronary. Now he's just laughing to hear his own voice. Yes, we have the circus map added to the court record. Let us move away from this gentleman as quickly as possible. That's a strong bit of dark humor there. Oh, well, I definitely don't want anything to do with him. Let's go back to the circus entrance. Then we'll move to the big top. And we'll move to the cafeteria. Well, my eyes immediately go to the broken bottle that's covered up by text at the moment. Keep our cafeteria clean, chat. Ew, this place is gross. This must be because of last night. They didn't have time to clean up after dinner because of the murder. That reminds me. What was it that Mo said? He said that yesterday morning, Max Clonk bent over the head here. He also said that there's gotta be something interesting here. Nick, what's gotta be interesting? Don't ask. Hmm. Well, let's look at everything but the bottle first. The kitchen is over here. We must have taken turns cooking. There's a duty list posted here. I wouldn't mind trying my hand at cooking for this many people. Maya's killer hamburger. You try it, wouldn't you? Oop, the TV is surprisingly not a clue. Keep our cafeteria clean. Doesn't seem like anyone ever read this sign, huh? Maybe they should make it easier to understand. Clean it or die. Well, that would definitely make them clean up. Message board, I think is what it says. Ah, uh, a bulletin board for, um, bulletins. It doesn't look like there are any useful clues posted here. Boring. Maybe we should leave a juicy tidbit for someone to read. Juicy? You know, 
Like a fake clue. Hmm. Maybe something like message from the killer. <laughs> oh, so we're basic. <laughs> there we go. Just just plant some false evidence at a crime scene. I'm sure that'll go real well with the police. Give it up, Maya. In a gum, she would take it all seriously. Looks like they left it exactly as it was on the night of the murder. They didn't seem too worried about cleaning up the dishes, did they? Hmm. Look at all these dishes is making me hungry. Let's go get a burger at the snack stand outside. Once we're finished with the case. All right, let's get this over with Nick. Here we go, whoa! Where's the mute button when you need it? Man, Chad, I, I'm not gonna lie. I definitely look forward to when we have other assistants other than Maya. <laughs> she, she, did, she did not click with me in the first game. She's not clicking with me on the second game. I, I think so far of the assistants, I guess the one we had in case five in the first game has been one of my favorite because she's actually competent. And then I would say second so far would probably be the police woman who worked under Gumshoe, followed by everybody else in distant last. <laughs> Very distant last. There are dirty dishes all over the place. Must have been too hectic last night to clean up. You know I can't stand a mess, Nick. I think you and I should clean this place up for them. Well, why do we have to clean it up? One, because I hate dirty cafeterias. Two, because one bears repeating. But this is a crime scene. You can't clean it up. You have to preserve it for evidence. Ugh. Do we really hate dirty cafeterias? Not as much as I hate cleaning dirty cafeterias. Oop. One additional thing to look at. This is strange. There's nothing on top of the stand. Look here. Max has written on it. Must be his VIP table. Isn't it a bit small to be a VIP table? I'm going to be putting a 10-course meal on this. Well, get to eat hamburgers, right? The chair's been knocked over. That's what it looks like. It almost looks as if someone knocked it over in a struggle. Or used it for self-defense. Or maybe Regent just likes to eat his dinner in the cafeteria. Finally, the important clue. What's this? Must be a juice bottle or something. Uh, watch out, Nick. There's broken glass all over the floor. Hmm, broken bottle just laying in the middle of the floor. Welcome, Apple Kappa. Uh, we've been about an hour into the case. You did miss PSO, though. So we're, we're still in investigation mode. Do you think it means anything? There's gotta be something interesting here. Huh? Looks like we're going to have to go back and meet with him. Him? Broken bottle added to the court record. Want to see the final chapter to this, though? No worries. I'm, uh, chat, chat will have to wish me luck to survive the final chapter. I'm not gonna lie. I definitely rage quit on the final case. I got really upset at what the game wanted me to do. I was not thrilled. But we'll get there eventually. I'll take deep breaths and I'll go... It's not Terranigma, exhale. It's not Terranigma, exhale. <laughs> we'll get through it. You want to experience that feeling again? Oh no. Oh, it's my two sweeties. Welcome to the detention center. Ugh, you just call me his sweetie again? What's on today's agenda? Oh, <laughs> you know, intense feeling and extremely unpleasant. I, I think that's a good summarization of the final case. What's on today's agenda? What can I help with you? Or what can I help you with? Well, we gathered quite a few clues. Wonderfully fantabuloso. I mean, fabulous. That's why we came to meet with you again. Oh, what, what's wrong? Quit making such a scary face. Unpleasant in the best way? No, I was... Mm. It was unpleasant in the, I'm done with this. There's no way this case could conclude in a satisfying way. I'm done with Phoenix. <laughs> and I stopped playing Phoenix Wright games after that. I did try a spin-off game, though. But here we are again. We're going to try to make it through this rough game for sure. 
Anyway, let's present the Magatama. I think we have everything we need, so let's see what they need us to do. Meeting with Russell. Last night, you met with the Ringmaster, correct? To negotiate your salary and such. Exactly, we reached an agreement about the salary for my six-month-old contract. That's the truth? The whole truth? What do you mean? You just went to his office to negotiate your new salary. I hate lies and I hate liars even more. What are you insinuating? Do you have any proof that I did something other than negotiate my fee last night? So let's present the papers, because it was a week ago. Take that! Take that. Th that's... It was on the table in the ringmaster's room. You weren't lying when you said you received quite a raise. Is there a problem with being well compensated? Not with the compensation, just with the date. This is dated a week ago. Uh-oh, the nervousness continues. Max, you finished your contract negotiations a week ago. F-f-f-fabulous. All right, I'll tell you the truth. That night, the ringmaster called me to his room. He called you. Why do you do that? Sorry, sweetie, that's private. The ringmaster called him. What if there's some sort of problem? Um, Max, perhaps you could share with me what you two spoke about? Well, not if I don't have to. Isn't this why the ringmaster called you into his room that night? Well, we have, like, no evidence to present, so I'm just gonna present the broken bottle. Take that, chat. Not a big mystery here. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Isn't this why you were called to the ringmaster's room that night? Well, where did you get that? The cafeteria. You already knew that, didn't you? Also, I love how we just talked about, like, oh, that detective gumshoe slip and fall, not preserving the crime scene. And then we literally take things from the crime scene. <laughs> like, do we not see the contradiction there, chat? Can we object on ourselves? Just big face plant. We took both from the guy's room and the cafeteria. <laughs> and we didn't we didn't tell it or possibly give photos over to Gumshoe. We're so bad, chat. We should not be allowed to present this into evidence later, but the game will probably forget that, of course. Of course. It fell and broke on the floor. He's still hiding something else. Max, what is it, my sweetie? It didn't fall and break on the floor. Use this bottle to... Hit Ben. Take that, Take that chat. B ben. Is that, it says juicy orange, 76% fresh flavored. What? 76% what? What? Something something evidence law? Exactly, chat. I like the little dummy you could just barely see under the box. And that's why you got called to the ringmaster's room that night. The fabulous! You might as well be a magician! Anyway, mystery revealed. Unlock successful. So it feels like we're almost done with the investigation. We might be able to start the trial. Let's go back to Max Galactica. Heard a lot about you at the circus, Max. Oh, you must mean from the dinosaurs. How were those Jurassic geriatrics? Max, you aren't very popular with the other performers, are you? Yes, yes, sweetie. That's why they... What they call jealousy. J-E-A-L-O-U-S-Y. They're absolutely jealous of my absolutely fabulous self. People who can really understand can see the obvious differences between us. <laughs> People who really understand? For instance, my sweetie pie. Hmm. So Regina understands him, huh? I plan on getting married to her. She's truly my sweetie pie princess. Ugh. Gross. Wow, that's so cool. It's already in the works. Oh? Go to what happened. You met with the ringmaster and then I the murder? Yes. I was with him until 10 p.m. Once I was done with practice. 
went into his room right after we finished. They found the ringmaster's body in the plaza, in front of the lodging house. Yeah, I heard about that. He needed to step out for a bit, so I waited in his room for him to return. Huh? Sorry, Max. I have something I must attend to right now. Do you mind waiting for me right here? It's pretty cold outside. Where's your coat? It's alright. I'll be right back. It should only take about ten minutes. And then, I waited for him, but he never came back. Did he go to the plaza where the body was discovered? Possibly. The snow had tapered off a bit, but it was still very cold outside. But I have no idea what he went off to do. Meeting with Russell. The truth is, yesterday morning during breakfast, we had a run-in. You mean you had a fight with Ben the Ventriloquist? You could put it that way. Why did you fight with him? Ben seems like such a quiet man. We fought about my sweetie pie. You mean Regina? That ill-bred creep told my sweetie pie princess that he was in love with her. Would you put up with that? Ill-bred? What are you talking- Are you talking about the same Ben? Told her he was in love with her. You sure this is the Ben we're talking about? All I can say is he made me mad and I had to tap him on his hard head. That's when the ringmaster called me and I realized that it was my chance. Your chance? That's when I went to his room and I laid it all out on the table. I asked him to let me marry my sweetie pie. What? The ringmaster told me that it sounds good to me. That's why my sweetie pie is my sweetie pie. And no one else's. Hmm, I see. Since Ben was causing me so much trouble, I realized I had to shut him up. Shut him up? Um, what do you mean by shut him up? You don't know, do you, my sweeties? Trillo can't say a word. Not without Ben. Trillo? The puppet. The ventriloquist puppet. His real name is Trillo Quist. What a truly great name, chat. Also, I feel like his puppet name should have been Ven and not Ben to complete the full pun. I'm just saying, chat. Should have called the puppet Ven. But a puppet doesn't talk. I know, that's why I hit it. Where the police came and took me away, of course. That puppet started flapping off at the balsa. I'd be screwed. You hit him? You mean the ventriloquist puppet? You are so smart, sweetie. Um, where did you hide him? What, sweetie? You weren't thinking of trying to add him to my defense, are you? Excuse me, Chan. Well, Ben does seem awfully lonely without his puppet. Fabulous. That should have taught him a lesson. Okay, I hid Trillo in the ringmaster's room. You don't mind going there and getting Trillo for me, do you, my sweets? No problem. None at all. Thank you, Max. You know I can't stand to see my sweeties in a jam. And don't go hiding puppets. Alright, so let's go back. December 28th, very big circus, circus entrance. Huh? Ben's not here anymore. Yeah, I wanted to ask him something. You know, with the whole he can't talk without the puppet thing, it's giving me a lot of, what was the name? Scarface vibes from Batman. With, uh... I think his name was Arnold Wesker, was the ventriloquist. 
<laughs> are we sure we are we sure he doesn't need to see psychiatric help or something? It's cold out. He's probably in the tent. Um, I think I go big top first. December 28th, big top. What do you think, Nick? I wonder if we've been making any progress. Don't be so negative. Of course we're making progress. But everyone loved the ringmaster. There's no sign of footprints on the scene. There's still a lot of mysteries left to be solved. Of course. And now Regina isn't here. I'm not seeing how that's related. Well, let's move on to the ringmaster room. Looks the same as always. A great big mess. Considering how messy it is, but they wouldn't notice if another poster went missing. Will you just stop it, you poster pilferer? I'm just kidding. You know I already got one of these posters. You mean stole one of those posters. Yeah, uh, let's focus on what Max told us. He said that he hit Trillo somewhere in this room. Trillo. Oh, the ventriloquist puppet. Um, I think it's here. Nick, look at all the cute trophies. Indeed, just look at all the awards the circus has won. Hmm, there's something shoved under the bookshelf. This is... That's Trillo. That's Ben's puppet. I think you're right. We'll give it back to him later. Trillo Quist. A ventriloquist puppet. An operatic tenor who doubles as Ben's sidekick. Why do I have to carry this thing? Okay. So I think we're making progress. Uh, is he in the cafeteria? This is promising. Things are appearing here. Oh, hey, Ben. Uh, um, he he hello. Hello to you, too. It's awfully cold today, don't you agree? Y y yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I d d d do indeed. Don't you think it's cold, Nick? I don't see how talking about the weather is helping our case. Well, I guess I could present him our badge. I think I forgot to do that earlier. Oh, no, no, we did. All right, let's present the Triloquist thing before we go further. Uh, Ben, this is yours, isn't it? Y yes, th 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 that's mine. Here you go. Triloquist returned to Ben. All right, Maya, let's get going. It's that time, isn't it? See you around, Ben. Oh, 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 okay. So, Nick, where are we going next? Let's see. Maybe we can... Hey, wait. Who said that? What are you looking at? I'm right here, you blind wench. What's your problem, anyways? Don't you know how to properly greet someone? Ben? Is that you, Ben? No, 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 no. I would never... Yeah, it was me. Yeah, me. Down here. You... You're... Trillo? Very much Scarface vibes. That's Mr. Quist to you. Learn some manners before you just blurt out my name. I try speaking to me again, but this time with some proper respect. Not again. Ugh. Mr. Quist, is that better? No, look at me when I'm talking to you, you 8 bit excuse for a turn. Let's try this again. No, look at me when I'm talking to you, you 8 bit excuse for an attorney. Trillo, we talked about insulting people. You promised. Now he's beating himself up. But he was mocking me. Not being mean to bullies was not included in the deal. I'm sorry, Trillo. Nick, what just happened? <laughs> this guy's the perfect metaphor of the internet tough guy, pretty much. Trillo's still a puppet, right? A ventriloquist. Hey, who you, who you think you are calling me a puppet? So anyway, we're gonna entertain his mental <laughs> problems, question mark. Not the third rate attorney.
I know, we're gonna we're gonna get demoted all the way to fourth rate at this rate. Let's ask what happened. Tell us when you know about the murder. You talking to me? I said you talking to me. Don't look at him when you're talking to me. Chiloquist, you behave, young man. Shut up, Woody. What murder are you talking about? You mean the old one where they off the old man? I guess so. Don't you make such a fuss about things. Oh, mutt paid us all peanuts. Trillo, you can't say things like that. I didn't raise you to be that kind of puppet. Don't you have nerve pills or something to take right now? These two are really an odd couple, aren't they, Nick? Hmm. I will say, chat, maybe my opinion will change, but I think this has one of the biggest collections of least likable characters in a case. I'm willing to state it, chat. They're, they're just, hmm. Their gimmicks are really intense. And they're not funny for the most part. But we'll, we'll get through it. I'll take a deep breath. I'll take a drink. I could voice him as a little boy, but I, I just feel like it'd be annoying. I'll be real with you. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna voice him more like Scarface. Oh, okay, okay, I'll talk. Grim's got clobbered over the head. Gimmicks are a bit insulting too. Yeah, I mean, you had like kind of like the first game was not innocent of that for sure. It's just that, wow, are they really intense in this game? Very big circus. Let me lay it all out for you. The pace sucks, the clown sucks, and my partner has his hand in my pants. Your partner? You mean Ben? Yeah, the creepy old guy who never finds it himself to leave me alone. You know what, this takes on a really different connotation given that he wants to date a 16-year-old. I know what they were going for, but like, I don't think they realized how it looked when they wrote it. Or maybe they did and they're just creepy. You take your pick, chat. Like, this would almost be funny if he was not then also dating a 16-year-old or attempting to. It's very weird. Come to back off for me, will ya? He's just another one of the dorks around here. Oh. My. But I'll be fair. In this cesspool of human garbage masquerading as performers. I mean, to be fair, Trillo is probably the most relatable character here. I found my Madonna. Your Madonna, well, up until that moment, of course. Madonna? Regina, my lovely Regina. She's stunning, right, Ben? Well, I'm not sure if I would go that far. You'll have to excuse him. He does not understand of what he speaks. I, on the other hand, am an appreciator of true beauty. Hence why I shall marry her. M -m 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 marry Flying fraud. The ringmaster got knocked upside his cheap head by that flying fraud. You mean Max Galactica? Why do you say that? Trillo, straighten up. Don't accuse people like that. Straighten up, I made a wood. Besides you there, you know what happened. You were there? <laughs> Apple Campus saying, damn, Regina is gonna get black pill when she gets older. Her mentors were not looking out for her. They had ulterior motives. I mean, that's just what it comes across as. And think about it too, like she's 16 now, but like how long were they with her in the performance, right? Like it just gets worse the more you think about it. It is just really creepy, like all in all, it really is. Like maybe the magician was only there for six months, but what about this character, for example? <laughs> if you're that interested, I'll let you in on the facts. Let's go to marriage. Although I don't want to ask this question, I will ask the question. You, you're going to marry Regina? That's right, she doesn't quite realize the joy that awaits her, does she? I think I'm beginning to see why she seems troubled. Yes, Phoenix, there's a lot of reasons why this is an uncomfortable case. Holy. Well, she, I don't care. It's my choice, not hers. We're getting hitched. I know you think that, but... But what? I gave her a special gift. I gave her the wonderful gift of song. You gave her a song? Well, I am a renowned tenor. I actually don't remember what tenor sounds like on a musical scare, a scale, but we'll make him bass, because my voice is deep. <laughs> it's not going up, Chad. It's not going up. I'd be happy to know that I decided to grace you with one of my songs. Me, 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 me. I want you to. T oh, gosh. 
I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to say these lines to be honest with you, chat. A deep sigh. Let me take a drink. <laughs> Dago says, "I think I remember why I blotted this from my memory." I want you to touch me. I want you to kiss me. I want you to. The rest is private. I don't want to know how the rest of that song goes. Well, um, the melody is pretty good. Those lyrics. I think they need a little work. Who asked you? I'm the artist here. Um, uh, uh, thanks. Now that Trullo's here. Now that Trullo's here. Does that mean you can talk normally now? Hey, buttface. Ah! You must be looking forward to tomorrow, aren't you, Mr. Ambulance Chaser? Um, you know, it's time to get rid of that pesky magician once and for all. Trillo? Enough jibba jabba. Let's get to the court already. Oh, hey, wait a second. You're gonna have to blot it again for sure. Nick, what's going on? He's a witness for tomorrow's trial. <laughs> Unfortunately. Ah, uh, I agree with Maya on that one. Move to the big top. Hmm. What in the world happened with Ben and Trillo? Quite a pair of those two. What did that puppet see? Ooh, ooh, from the monkey that we just heard. Oh no. Now what? There you go, chat. There's not, there's not enough annoying characters in the case. Let's add more characters. Mmm, delightful. Mmm. Ooh, ooh, chat. Ah! Yeah! Ah! Game over. Hey, welcome back, Nick. Th that monkey. Ah, my badge. That monkey stole it. What? <laughs> Mr. Attorney, that face was so cute. You look so completely dumbfounded. Regina. You, that monkey. Hey, no need to get angry, okay? But my attorney's badge. Don't worry, I'll help you out. Okay, if you say so. But don't get my badge back. How can I flash it? <laughs> Phoenix with his priorities is normal. By the way, the monkey's name is Money. Money the monkey. Real clever there, chat. They took the word monkey and removed the letter K. They did it. His name is Monk... Money? Well, I guess we have to ask about Money the monkey before we proceed. The monk- oh, excuse me. The monkey is called money. Yes. Well, the rich ape just stole my attorney's badge. And if I get that back, I'll see what I can do. Even I have money problems. But, um, shh. Huh? Whenever money sees something shiny, takes it back home. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Well, I guess I'll have to find out where money disappeared to. Feel the play on words for something later in the case, I suppose. I think that's your best bet. Should probably ask Uncle Mo. He might know. Huh? You don't know? Well, money isn't exactly someone I'm on friendly terms with. What? He's not really the kind of animal I work with, even if he does need taming. Oh, I see. Go to Mo's. Hmm. Guess it is time that I revisit that kooky clown. Let's talk about Ben and Trillo first, though. Do you mind telling us about Ben? Ben? Oh, you mean the guy that is always hanging around with Trillo? What do you mean, hanging around? Well, he was here when Trillo told me that he was in love with me. Trillo told you he was in love with you? Yes, he did. Kinda cute, don't you think? No. No. He's so smart and such a wonderful singer. I love him. But, what about Ben? What about Ben? He's got nothing to do with me loving Trillo. Are we sure she's also mentally okay? Are we entirely sure, chat? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Like sand through the hourglass, so are the days of the circus. Proposal. Regina, you were proposed to, weren't you? 
Propose to? Nope. That wouldn't be for a while. Huh? Really? That's strange, isn't it, Nick? Yeah. Max and Trillo both said otherwise. They said they asked for her hand in marriage. Ah, uh, but Max only talked to the ringmaster about it. I forgot about that. He asked the ringmaster for her hand, not Regina directly. So I guess Trillo hasn't asked her directly yet. What? He's gonna propose to me. This <laughs> is so creepy in hindsight. It is absolutely creepy. I'm so confused. How about you, Maya? <laughs> it just, like, honestly, the longer this goes on, the worse it gets. It is so bad. Huh? What? Who do you think I should go for? Max or Trillo? None. <laughs> None. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, chat? Run, run Regina, run. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean if, if we're gonna if we're gonna do like the time period this was in call, get Chris, get Chris Hansen on this he'll help you just he'll he'll get things sorted out Chad <laughs> wait wait you do realize that Trillo is a puppet get mental up for Genus as a parameter yeah pretty much uh huh I don't care that he's a bit stiff. Oh boy. Oh, see, now I needed the laugh track again, chat. I keep forgetting to boot up the laugh track. That was an absolute laugh track moment. Uh, let's see. Where would he be? Maybe he's back in his room, but I have to go this way, I think. December 28th, Lodging House Plaza. Huh? Detective Gumshoe took off already. Yeah. Probably because we ditched him earlier. I bet he and the other cops got lonely and headed back to the precinct. Okay. Mo's room. December 28th, lodging house, first floor, Mo's room. Oh my, if it isn't Mr. Wright all the time. Ugh. It's all right to be wrong every now and again, right? See, Nick? Just took a while for the joke to find its audience. Uh, seriously, how did I forget something as creepy as this as Dango? I I don't think I looked at their ages. I think when I played, the only one that I thought was weird was probably Ben. I didn't look at the ages of the characters. But now that I looked at the ages of the characters, it's horrific. Like, I already thought it was just weird specifically with Ben, because I knew he was supposed to be older. And I vaguely recall Max's age. But I didn't realize, like, she was 16. It was still weird, don't get me wrong, even without her being 16. Even if she was 18, it still would have been pretty weird. But then, honestly, big sigh from us either way. So what can I do for you? Do you remember a good joke you wanted to tell me? Pull up a chair, maybe just pull my finger and let me have it. We're going to get the same, same sound effect either way, aren't we? How do you know I put a whoopee cushion on the chair? You really know what it takes to be a clown, don't you? Ah ha! 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 Let's talk about Regina. So, about Regina. Regina's such a pure, innocent child. Again, that's that's not helping with the, it's not helping with the mental imagery. It's really not. Still call. Don't refer to her as a child. <laughs> it makes it so much worse. It makes it so much worse. She's such a cutie, too. She was born and raised in a circus, you know. That means she doesn't really know much about the world outside the big top. Sounds like Pearly. For her, every child's dream of the circus is her everyday reality. She lives in a dream world. It just, it gets worse and worse. She sees dancing wild animals, men flying in the air, and one very funny clown every day. Well... <laughs> but does that funny clown visit from another circus? <laughs> sure, God, this guy sure isn't funny. The funny thing is that all this seems normal to her because it's her everyday life. I guess that explains why she thinks she can marry a ventriloquist puppet. Don't ask me if her reality is a good thing or a bad thing, though. The clown sees life simply, without complications. Let's ask about Money the Monkey. Have you ever heard of a monkey named Money? Ah, yes, Money. He stole my attorney's badge. Well, money does love shiny objects. 
I love that it's in red, so you know this will be relevant later. It makes sense that you'd swipe your badge. Understand, under no circumstances can you chase after him. Huh? Why is that? Oh, I know. You don't want to get involved in any monkey business, right? Exactly. Bravo. Bravo. Enough joking around, though. Money isn't considered a member of Regina's family. Then who does he belong to? I'll be happy to take you to where his owner's staying. You mean right now? Of course. Shall we go? Hmm, should we go with him now or wait a while? Go with Mo. Oh, that was a dramatic cut. December 28th, Lodging House, third floor, Acro's room. You can see a ape on the poster back there. I forget what that specific kind of gorilla is called offhand. If chat knows, enlighten me. Phoenix Huffs. This is it. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? I can't breathe. Don't be such a wimp. I had to climb two flights of stairs. <sighs> Anyways, this is the place. Acro's room. Acro? He's an acrobat. Yeah, real subtle there, name one. Seems like he's not around today. <sighs> That's a big pile of junk over in the corner. I don't think it'd be wrong to assume that Phoenix's stuff is over there, too. Hmm. I'm sure there's no way the monkey has taken something relevant to the case, given all the red text chat. Mm-hmm. Just be care- just make sure that you've got all the right stuff. Thanks, Mo. See you later. Money the monkey. Monkey who takes care of Acro habitually c c gathers all sorts of shiny objects. Money the monkey added to the court record. Actually, I guess it could technically be an orangutan. Might be like a, what's it, like a Borneo or a Bornean orangutan? <laughs> it's a monkey calendar. Whoever's in this room must really love monkeys. Oh, I just got it. Acro and Bat never connected when I was a kid. Oh no. Maybe a little too much. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you love Trillo Quist with Ben. So together they're Ben Trillo Quist. Wow. I just realized the year's almost over. Amazing how time flies. It's been one wild year, especially the last part. Well, we still got one last person to help this year, Max. This bed is incredibly well made. It's almost like a maid made it up. Even the laundry on top of the bed is folded perfectly. Nick, there's nothing unusual about that at all. It's how things are supposed to be. Can a man respect another man for doing something said man cannot do? There's a weight on the floor. Hmm. It's got a barbell. Look around. Everything he's got is for upper body training. Wait a second. These are the same machines I see on TV all the time. Hey, Nick. What? I don't have this one. This barbell here is a new model. Don't overdo it, Maya. You don't want to end up a muscle woman. What's wrong with that, Phoenix? What if she wants to have muscles, Phoenix? You think about that? Shaking my head at you, Phoenix. Hey, the net's ripped. Money must be prone to breaking things. He's hardcore. Um, the net looks fine to me. Really think that he plays basketball? I think so. Monkeys live life above the rim, you know. Dot 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 from Phoenix. You're joking, right? You think the monkey has got proverbial game? Of course. The monkey doesn't fake the funk on a nasty dunk. Where did this come from? I'm more laughing at how absurd the sentence is than, like, the joke itself. Like, why? Just <laughs> why? Well, a prehensile tail might be an unfair advantage. That was certainly a conversation we bore witness to. You can see the big top from the window here. There's no snow on top of the big top. Kinda weird, don't you think? Man, the converse between Mia and Phoenix were always gold. There's something. Inside of the tent is warm, so any snow that lands on top probably melts. I guess you're right. Snow probably just slides right off. Let's look at the... Oh, we can look at the footprints down here. 
Okay, let's look over here. Holy cow! There's a fork and a mirror. Everything's shiny. There's even a really cheap looking knockoff wristwatch. Look at this. It's a trophy. And it's really heavy. It's almost like it belongs somewhere else in the circus when we mentioned that something should have been there before. Nick, I found it. Your badge, it's right here. It's my all-important badge. It shows them a defense attorney. Attorney's badge returned to its rightful spot on the lapel. They were so outlandish, but it still felt natural. Uh, I don't know about natural. I'll, I'll agree with outlandish. Thanks. You really saved me. Huh? What's the matter? Did you find something? Yeah. Check this out. It's a ring. There's something engraved on it. From T to R. I'm just shaking my head. Cheap ring with an eerie sparkle from T to R is engraved on it. Ring put in pocket. Damn, we're just straight up thieving again. <laughs> Some of it makes sense, but she goes pretty out there at times. Not every conversation is quite like that, but some of them are like, hmm. Big hmm. Well, I think it's about time we wrap up our investigation. Do you think we'll win in court tomorrow? Who knows? Even I can't imagine what kind of testimony will come out tomorrow. I'm guessing Mo will be a witness in court tomorrow. Mo and maybe the puppet. Don't worry, Nick. No matter what, we still got a magician on our side. Like, these conversations are fine. It's more when we investigate some objects. There are some really out there comments she makes. That's good. Because we might need some magic tomorrow. To be continued. I think we got... We still got at least an hour to go. Let's, let's go into the trial. Uh-oh, Maya was your childhood crush. I'm sorry to say, she did not click with me. <laughs> but I also played it when I was slightly older. Let's take that as you will. December 29th, 9.43 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 5. Max dot dot dots. Good morning, Max. Max? Mil milk. What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage... I just can't function, sweetie. S stage Don't worry. There won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. Who is my AA crush? No one. <laughs> it's like, absolutely no one. <laughs> I guess... Nick? Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. What? You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you've got to make a good first impression. Unlike every character in this case so far. Sure. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? Dot 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 from Phoenix. I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really? No one needs to fly today. Nick? What's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. Dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. Oh no, chat. <laughs> we took too many whips to the head earlier. December 29th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Bang. And now the case of one. Dot 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 dot. What? Your honor, get on with it. Oh, sorry. I just realized the defendant's name is Billy Bob Jones. I almost said Jones. It's Johns. So. Well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, your honor. He does often go by that name. 
You know, my great my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. Bang. It sounds more friendly. Hmm. I wonder if that is to our advantage. Miss Von Karma, your opening statement if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Huh? That spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. I mean, it was a sham, but not for the reasons you mean. It did not count. Do you hear me? She must still be upset about what happened last time. You have no chance. Zero. Zilch. Nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of a Von Karma to lose at anything. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. <laughs> you just wait, Maya. You just wait. I can fix her, says Apple Kappa. <laughs> so she went through the proper channels to appear the court, correct? I mean, there, there doesn't... I don't know. I guess we haven't seen like a mistrial. I think they briefly mentioned it, I think, in the fifth case, maybe. Unless I'm misremembering that. But so far, none of these people seem to be talking about uh, going in with at least with another judge. I mean, at, at minimum, she could probably get it retried due to the incompetency of the court. <laughs> I think that would fly with every case so far. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. M -m me Guilty? Ah, what are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. But it's not like it'll bring her dad back. There, opening statement complete. Now let's hurry up and wrap up this waste of time. <laughs> oh, Von Karma. You say this is a waste of time. Just you wait. You haven't seen anything yet. Bang. Very well. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective Gumshoe, get up there now. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. Don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. At your service, sir. All right, detective. You may proceed with your testimony. Witness testimony. Details of the events. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. Oh, that's right. I never looked at the map, but I guess we're seeing a map now. That works. My bad, Chad. I meant to present that earlier. All the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15 p.m. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blood force trauma that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. I see. He was beaten to death. Here is the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts this into evidence. Oh, excuse me. The court accept this, not accepts this. Oops, missing an S there. Russell's autopsy report. Time of death. I can't talk. Time of death, 10.15 p.m. Cause blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Autopsy report added to the court record. A blunt object. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Um. Hmm. What to press in the statement? Uh. Hmm. 
Do I want to press the... I guess I'll press the very first statement. I was thinking if I wanted to start with this one or not. Well, we'll see. Let's just go back to the first one and press. Hold it! Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. I guess I want to bring up the footprints. I'm just trying to think about, like, what would make sense this early in the investigation. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half on the ground. The snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. Hmm. Snow, let me see. There's gotta be more to this. Huh? What's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Uh, I don't think I care about them gathering. I could press on 10 p.m. Let's press about the box because they never told us what it was. So let's try this one. Hold it. Hold it. A wooden box. That's right. Plus, it's also not in evidence. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? The victim was hunched over this 20-pound box. It boasts a small but strong lock. Put a box out to the court record. Okay, this is good. Maybe my only chance. I might as well ask some questions. Um... Hmm... So when they gave us this, what did they give us? So I don't think I care about the lock yet. Maybe if we find that a key is needed or something, maybe it'll be relevant. Obviously, asking about the wooden box, I don't think would give us any details. But I, I still want to know about the contents of the box, so even the court record still doesn't tell us what's in here. So let's follow up on this. Do you mind telling us what was inside the box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? What is that, detective? Exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? The track is inside. I mean, given how everybody's acting in the circus, I wouldn't rule it out, Dango. I mean, why else is the box that heavy? It's the decoy, right, chat? <laughs> it's hidden underneath somehow, in like a hidden compartment. There's only one little bottle in that huge box. I wonder if that has some sort of special meaning. Small seasoning bottle found inside the wooden box the victim was hunched over. It contains pepper. Added to the court record. Uh, well, we also haven't had a murder weapon, so let's press on this, maybe. Hold it! According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it's something with something the perpetrator ran off with. He would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, no, I bet he made it disappear with magic. Ho, ho, ho. Bang. Well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're going to get out of Gumshoe in this case. I mean, we're all going to get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Well, we also learned about the box, which for some reason wasn't in the court record. Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Huh? I'm not even off the stand yet. Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Bang. 
Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. She must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. I wonder if Chilla will show up on the stand as well. The answer is yes. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My full name is Triloquist, and I'm employed as an operatic tenor. I excuse me. The witness called to the stand was one Benjamin Woodman, Ventriloquist. That row must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you with a song. Ahem. Me, 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 me. The world of the law. Exciting and daring. Guilt or innocence decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. It had a good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. Trillo, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly I want to punch you in the face on the off chance of swelling would help. Objection badgering the judge. Yeah, pretty much. You know the, you know that your nose is the reason you love of being an A-list star. Celebrities must really s enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order, order! I demand to know who the witness is. Don't, don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about getting testimony and- Ow! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now let's proceed. <laughs> She's like, they're so mentally damaged. Let's not even go do it in the courtroom. We don't have time. <laughs> anyway. Witness testimony, what you witnessed. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He's the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Would testimony even stand like this? I would hope not. Literally whipped, indeed. Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica... Well, let's try this again. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. You're sure of that? Without a doubt, he out in a silk hat cloak and the dumb white roses on his chest. How could you mistake someone with this crazy getup and his high... Oh, his nose stuck up so high. Th th that's enough. I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, wouldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Hmm. He's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why is that? Here's absolute proof. I mean, it just means they took his wardrobe hat. That doesn't really mean anything. A, a silk hat? This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Without a question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there'd be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. And she bows. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? Uh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. What you witnessed. Okay, so let's go through the statements one more time. Act was over. Got to lodging. Could ask about ditching, but I don't think that's the correct thing. All right, let's let's at least question how could the punk not be the killer. Let's press. Hold it. You saw Max and only Max, right, Trillo? That's right. That makes him the killer. There's only one person heading that way that night. 
Hmm, that makes quite a bit of sense. It makes Max one suspicious character. Thank you, Imperameter, for the good night and good luck. We'll be wrapping up, I think, once we're done with this trial portion. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss? Hmm. Uh, let's see. No problems is obviously not correct. There's no proof it was Max. Not correct. Ben only saw Max. I guess he should have seen the Ringmaster head that way. I'm guessing this is it for the answer. Let's select this. That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose the witness sh could have seen? Well, I'm going to present Russell Berry. Take that. Take that! That's the victim. That's correct. Trilla was at the entrance to the plaza. He should have seen the ringmaster as well. Ah! Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness could have seen him. Anyone with a sense could have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. And Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room. Why was he, just as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? I mean, it's just somebody in his outfit. This isn't really rocket science. Ah! I see. It seems that at this stage, I have no reason to doubt those witnesses' testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. He's right. A brilliant judgment, your honor. Now let's move along with the testimony. Hmm. Trilla wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with the Regina. Which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know anymore. Okay. Hmm. Let's press on the took him away comment, maybe. Hold it. Around, about, oh, excuse me. Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm. I suppose that would have been around, hey, what time was it? Huh? Um, I think it was around, I'd say a bit after 10.30 p.m., I think. Practice ended at 10 p.m. So you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I, I, I... I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? Can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big-nosed dope? When are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe we just stand outside in that weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. Oh, okay, now we're tying it together. Okay, so we're gonna present the ringmaster on this one, then. Whoa, 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 what?! Who said we're waiting for someone? It's true, they did say he left for only 10 minutes, so... That would potentially make Ben the last person to see him alive, according to the testimony so far. Objection! Objection. Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can all do without your off-headed theories. Objection! But, this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm on to something. Hmm. Mr. Wright... Who do you suppose the witness was waiting for out in that cold night? Well, I mean, there's only one person, let's be real. Let's present Russell Berry, the father, and the ringmaster. Take that! Don't hold your tongue, Ben! It's your job to answer all the stupid questions! I'm sorry, Trillo. We've got to find a way to get more information out of this witness. Oh. Um... Uh, I'm sorry, wrong person. Okay, so if he's not looking to meet with him... Okay, then I know who he would be meeting then. Okay, so I guess wrong, that's fine. Oops. 
Unfortunately, I need to go to the last sentence in there, and if I press it too quickly, I go to it. Okay, so there's one other person he would show up and talk to. So let's press again. So if we're not coming to that conclusion yet that he came to meet him there, there is one thing Trillo would want to see, and that is the unfortunate young daughter of said father. Let's present her instead on this piece. Ah. So let's do Regina. Well, if he's waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. And one person only. He's waiting for the animal tamer. Tamer, Regina. Ooh, the doll exploded. That was something. You're waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Trillo dot dot dots. Is this true? Well, I am... Um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting on for that night? What's important is what I saw. Don't you forget it. Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Huh? All right. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all the time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him. I doubt he would have even paid them a second thought. Exploding puppet again. Bang. That makes perfect sense. Objection! What did you say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. Objection! However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than Max heading to the scene of the- Ow! There was absolutely no proof the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. That's why I didn't want to go for that initially, actually. Um... Um... I guess you got me. Alright, alright, I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true, I was waiting for Regina. Pain! Don't volunteer things. Mr. Quist, tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? What's the matter? You think humans have a monopoly on marriage? <laughs> The matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge. I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More pain. Hmm. Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. I love how they call it a waste of time. Oh, you've still not seen anything yet, Von Karma. Just you wait. About the proposal. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. Like the ring we found earlier. I stayed in my pocket waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I still got it in my pocket. Oops. Well, we know that's not true. You were going to propose. You. A puppet. Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I can't couldn't propose to her too. Ew! No! Ew! Ew! Objection! What is wrong with you? <laughs> Writers, please. Okay, maybe the maybe the 21 and the 16-year-old in Japan was okay. There is no way this judge and her are okay. Get out of here, Japan. Get out of here. Ridiculous. Exactly. His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now. <laughs> You're telling me, Phoenix. <laughs> okay, Mr. Wright. Please continue with your cross-examination. Oh. 
What was with that sigh at the end? About the proposal. Alright, we need him to acknowledge the ring. So let's press him on this. Hold it. What was it exactly you plan on giving her? Because I feel like if I present the ring too early, the game will be like, penalty. Duh, it can't possibly be the ring. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? So we have to take it slow. You know exactly what I was going to give her, numbskull. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question, what was it? You're going to die when you hear this. It's an engagement ring. An engagement ring? Wow. Those two nearly fell out of their chairs. Mr. Phoenix's right joke has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Oh, please, please end it, Von Karma. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. How is that different than any other time she's on the stand, Phoenix? One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. Pain equals bad or push on anyway? <laughs> I kind of like that one, but we're going to push on. I may it may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that, that a puppet has ever proposed to human- Ow! I advise you to cut this argument short. I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement ring. I'd like to stick to facts, not sociology. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black ro- Back- Can't try this again. Especially for a man in a black bathrobe. There we go. We got through the sentence. Alright, well- Well, okay, now that we've added to the other one, maybe it's good enough now for me to present here. Let's present the ring that the puppet obviously doesn't have, so let's present. Trillo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about? Uh-oh. Looks like they're gonna double-team me now. You recognize this ring? Ah, that's, that's, that's mine. Give it back, thief, thief. Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said... In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Ah! Dang. What is going on here? Well, you see, Your Honor, they're all lying liars. He didn't talk about the monkey. He didn't talk about the puppet being taken. What a, what a fibber, chat. What a fibber. That's... That's... Ben, say something. Uh, don't put me on the spot like that, Trillo. I found this in Money's room. M -m -m Money's room? You mean a room they put money like a bank vault? Ah, that filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats in my court. Well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey, in every sense of the word. Oh, I see. Oh, well then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he could find and gather them up. Shiny things? Trillo, when was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was. That time. You know, that night. The night of the crime. What did you just say? Details. I need more details. Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might, um, be able to say that. The ring might have, well... It could have been taken around that time. Ooh, ooh goes monkey. Oh, yeah. Oh.
Ben, what's wrong with you? Oh, whatever. It's nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted to anything, not I. Mr. Trilloquist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did. Chase after that ring snatching monkey money. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this slow loafy fool called Ben's fault. I was fumbling his way through the snow. That dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed a cr an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one and very important point. Prove an important point? What point could that possibly be? Ben doesn't exercise enough is kind of funny. But no, it's Ben's testimony is a flaw. It's obviously if he's chasing the monkey, how would he have witnessed things properly? Yada, yada, yada. There's a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. C contradiction? The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated he chased after money the monkey. When the witness was off chasing money, there was no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying there's no possible way this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It's entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Bang, 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 chat. Objection! Objection. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Objection. Objection! Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. He's blinded by his rivalry with Max. Bang. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. Does he? How does the judge know this? Wait, what? What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get that dork face in trouble. It's not even worth it. I saw him, no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw on that night. Huh, I've told you so many times you think I, you'd know what my- oh, let's try this again. Huh, I've told you so many times you'd think you'd know my story's not changing. Already changed your story, stick boy. I'm sure it will change some more. Taking another drink there. Where there's one lie, there are usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah. Witnessing Max, witness testimony. I'll give you that I was waiting for that night for Regina, but that doesn't change the fact I saw Max in the plaza that night. Shut up after I'd been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. Absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Hmm. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max. That's right. Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. The timing's awfully convenient. Then money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him? How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about... I suppose five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Hmm. I'm not gonna ask that. I'm not asking that. I mean, obviously we have to eventually get something to present the broken bottle. So maybe I'll try to press this statement to get something amended so I can present the bottle. Hold it. 
So, you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. Ben dot dot dots. What, Ben? You got something to add? Let me guess. That's not it, Trillo. You say good evening at night. Oh, I'm sorry, Trillo. Bang. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you kept your ventriloquist act outside the courtroom. Impossible. A performer lives and breathes his performances. You should know better. There's gotta be something wrong with this business testimony. Um, uh, <laughs> Ben's half of the comedy act. Um... Uh, I'm gonna say greeting. I guess this might lead to the bottle. Let's go for this one. Isn't that a bit strange to you? What do you mean? Well, if he ain't Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why do it strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Well, it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker. I would understand. Ow! That hurt. Maybe you should think of having some proof before your lips start flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. Ooh, she knows about her grade school thing. But we don't comment on that? Seriously? Whatever. There's no reason that Trilla would ever say something nice to Max. But how do I get about proving that with the evidence? Bluffing is everything in this world, but I'm sure you already learned that one. I guess I could give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. Hmm. So that didn't lead to anything. Can I just present the bottle immediately to this then? I didn't have to press? Alright. Objection! Objection. Trillo. Is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just an argument. A disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. Ah! Uh -uh. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? Whoa, whoa, what? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Ouch! Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. Oh my gosh, they're acknowledging other crimes being committed? The truth is, on the day of the crime, the defendant and the witness had a huge fight. There's absolutely no way they would have suddenly become cordial that evening. <laughs> there we go, Phoenix. Throw him under the bus. Get more charges on his, his little docket or whatever. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on stand. There's no way a puppet this lewd would just up and say good evening to his rival. Ah! Objection! Are you saying this witness is lying? That he's trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I, I didn't tell a single lie. Honestly, I just... That's enough from you, Mr. Quist. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? Hmm. I'm gonna say he saw a different person. It is my belief the witness did see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. W what? If he truly meant Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there's only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trillo made the effort to greet whoever it was he saw that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Uh, what in the world? You... 
Would the defense kindly explain who it was Trillo saw that evening? You know what? This makes me more mad that I put Russell Berry as the person he saw that night. <laughs> and then I'm presenting on this one that he's seeing Russell Berry. That annoys me so much, chat. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I'm just kind of like face bombing. Big side chat. Take that. Take that. Considering the ill temper of the witness, there's only one person he would greet. It must be Regina. It's Regina, right? She's so cute. Ill judge. Ill. Ill. Chat, someone hose him down. <laughs> just make, make, make him stop talking. Whip him. Whip him, prosecutor. Whip him good. No, Your Honor, it is not Regina. If it was Regina, Trillo would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah. I suppose you've got a point there. <laughs> I love the music just pauses and it's like, the, basically the game is going, so anyway. <laughs> just like, immediately went back to the music. Welcome, Nate. Hope you're doing well. It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster, Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trillo. Isn't that correct? He gulps. Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Whoa! Ah! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, how dare you res- Oh, how do you respond to this? I thought it was how dare you respond to this. I mean, to be fair, some of these questions. Oh, wait a second. Well, at first I thought it was the old man, but, but I got a better look at him and it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. Hmm. I think it is high time we clear the air about this question. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. Was it Maximilian Galactica, or was it the ringmaster, one Mr. Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols? All right, this is getting old. Come on, man, you gotta remember them by now. Here we go again, everyone all together now. Wow. Oh. Yes, yes, we know the silk hat, silk hat, cloak, and white roses. Objection. A silk hat and a cloak. Anyone could wear them. They'd even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witness has endlessly repeated he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was Maximilian Galactica? It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Bang chat. Miss Von Karma. Do you have clear evidence that the person the wit witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it is impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. Yes, I think we finally won a point in this case. That is very unfortunate. Huh? You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you mean by that? You merely established one thing from this witness. We established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but... But... Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer to that question, an evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for this crime. Bang. Very well. The court will take a 10 minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare their next witness. 
court is now in recess. Okay. So let's get through the next witness. I could stop here. But let, let's finish up the trial. First portion, anyway. So 2-1 completed. 2-2 trial saved. December 29th, 11.54 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. So sweetie, you have to believe me. I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene. So then, where were you when the murder took place? We talked about it yesterday, remember? I was in the ringmaster's room. Yeah, you can see the you can see the hat and cloak in the stand in the flashback. So oops. And while you were there, it was the ringmaster who left the room, right? Exactly. He told me to wait in the room because he would be right back. That's when the ringmaster headed to the scene of the crime, right? That's what it seems like. But the ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Oh, sweetie, I just remembered. I went straight to the ringmaster's room, still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means... It means the ringmaster could have taken his costume and went out looking like Max. Fabulous. That's a fabulously possible possibility. <laughs> well done, Nick. However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Hmm. If you think about it, all they found at the scene of the crime was my silk hat. What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double, hmm. Wow, Max. I never thought of that. You should be a detective or something. Or you shouldn't be working in this line of work, Maya. You take your pick on that one. Well, I was never quite sure what to be when I grew up. Magician or president? You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. That's really cool. Fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. December 29th, 12.06 p.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Bang. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well. I will con- Oh, excuse me. I will now call my next witness. A pitiful clown with the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. Will Mr. Lawrence Curls please take the stand? Oh, is that like a Three Stooges reference? Like it's Larry, Curly, and Mo, and he goes by Mo with his stage name. Got it. I think I missed his full name the first time I played, but no, it's 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 very obviously Three Stooges. Why did she just call him a pitiful clown? The witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. He dot dot dots. Well, and karma dot dot dots. He dot dot dots. Oh my gosh. No way. It flashed it really fast. But he was making a Fresh Prince reference. I saw it. Because I saw the... You, instead of the board in West Philadelphia... The West Philadelphia born and raised, blah, blah, blah. He said in West Clownopedia born and raised. Oh my gosh. I was not expecting a Fresh Prince reference, but there we go. Is there a way to see the other dialogue? I'm just curious when that happens. I don't think there is. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, nothing to do here. Oh, well. Will the witness please inform the court why he's speaking autobiographical gibberish? No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in court. Never been in a courtroom in my life. Wasn't quite sure what joke is best suited for this kind of occasion. What in the world are you talking about? 
You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. Since it's easy to see your occupation, please state your name for the court. Oh yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Mom, do I have to wear pants? The sign says only no shirt, no shoes, no service. Closer for the courtroom. Okay, okay, how about this? Be met my proctologist, Dr. Seymour Butts. Ooh, that's like a... Ooh. <laughs> Just whew, waving myself down there. Some old Simpsons flashbacks there for a moment. How is that one? <laughs> but a couple of clowns who were up no good start making trouble in the... Wow, he's still continuing with the Fresh Prince reference. Your name... Lawrence Curls, professional funny man also known as Mo the Clown. You witnessed the scene at around 10.15 p.m. the day of the murder, correct? Yes, yes it is. Very well, Mr. Curls. Will you please testify to what you saw that evening? A rabbi, a priest, and a rastafair... Without the humor, please. Okay, Rast what? Rastafarian? Why is he bringing up Rastafarians? What? I am so confused. Okay. Aw, oh, poor Mo can't be his normal stoogy self in court. Thankfully. <laughs> right, chat? Thankfully. Witness testimony, what you witnessed. I know. I know. I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. <laughs> that made me laugh. That is, that is an understatement of the century. I've been able to make people laugh for 10 years. I can see why. No matter what I say, all I get in return is a vacant stare and polite applause. It's because you're bad. Because you're bad. Because no one ever laughs at my jokes. I'm taking a laugh at them myself. Oof. Big oof. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. Imagine my predicament. I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. Yeah. Yeah, you really are. But I keep trying. I even try to come up with jokes just for today. This atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. Decided to try to make everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone, what do you think of me? How am I doing? What does this have to do with the case? Can we just shout objection? Witness is just literally like blabbering on about something unrelated. <laughs> Judge dot dot dots. Uncarma dot dot dots. Um. Are we the one supposed to be asking the questions here? Witness. Huh? We will listen to your call for help after the court proceedings are over. Thus, please stick to the facts of this case. Really? You, you'll you really hear me out? Well, make sure that one of my staff will be your straight man later. Thank you, thank you, I can't wait. Poor Gumshoe. Now that that's settled, shall we begin once again with the testimony? Of course we can. I'll talk for as long as you want. I don't want you to talk. Please don't talk anymore. <laughs> what you witnessed. We'll say take two, even though it's called it the same thing. Night of the murder after practice was over. Went straight back to my room. You have no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. Thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. That's when I saw two silhouettes. They're a bit far away, though. He was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. Hmm. It's interesting he didn't mention the hat there, actually. That's very interesting. If this eyewitness account is, be is to be believed, I have enough to pass judgment right now. Of course you can. There's no way this account can be criticized. However, the witness is a bit, how do you say, off-kilter. Almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. Aha! 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 That must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the defense's cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, 
You gotta find some sort of contradiction in his testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright, Your Honor. I'm afraid that if you push this witness too far, it would bring disaster upon the court. What? <laughs> Thus, I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in pointless saber, saber rattling. I love how the judge is acknowledging we have such mentally unstable witnesses that we're not allowed to press them for details. That's truly something, Chad. I understand, Your Honor. If you cause this clown to stray from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one with the corny jokes. Hmm. Don't have any questions there. Don't have questions there. Um. Maybe I want to press this? Like, obviously, we have to- we have to press this one eventually, but do I want to press one of the other ones first? <sighs> I'm gonna press it. Hold it. You just happen to glance out the window? You could say that. You could say I peeked, stared, glimpsed, peeped, eyeballed. Mr. Curls. Oh, I guess my synonyms aren't allowed either. What should I do? I wonder if I should press him further on the issue. Uh, let's keep pressing. Exactly why did you look out of your window that night? Yeah, maybe they'll talk about maybe there's something with the lights that happened or sounds or something like that. Maybe we get some details from it. Why? Why? Plants don't need a reason to look out their windows, do they? That's not what I meant. I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday, Oh, I forgot he actually said that. Oops. <laughs> um, oh, well, I blame being tired on that one. Once I tucked myself into bed, heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. Not like a giant thump. I remember the thump part. I forgot he said he tucked himself into bed already. Oops, we got lucky on that one. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. You forgot. Your Honor. When it's looked out of his window upon hearing a loud sound, he did not just simply glance out of his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? Owie, owie, owie. That's not something you just forget to mention. Um, yeah. What she said. I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Curls, please revise your testimony. You should start turning the tables in our favor. So, we need to eventually... The problem is, is I don't have what would be required to say what the loud thump was. Like, it could be the wooden box, maybe? I don't know if I want to touch this one yet. Let's see if I could press here to say maybe he'll forget the hat. So we could potentially answer the thumb with our evidence, maybe. We'll think about it. Hold it! You say you saw the ringmaster get clonked over the head? Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. He really does enjoy the completely random non sequitur. What would you say the victim was struck with? He mean the weapon? I have no idea. Weapon wasn't found at the murder scene, right? That's not what I meant. You did say you did see everything, didn't you? Well, I, um... Yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no, I didn't. I didn't see a weapon. <laughs> Mo, did you or did you not see the crime of murder committed that night? Objection. Objection. I will not permit you to harass my witness in this manner. We're literally asking you a question. Shut up, Von Karma. There's other things you can object to, that is not one of them. You better have an excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown. He literally doesn't know what the weapon is. I think this is a legitimate objection. Get out of here. As if you don't, you know what is waiting for you. I 
A nice penalty. Ooh, that penalty is huge. We gulp. Isn't this a bit melodramatic? So what will it be then, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear basis to believe that my witness did not see the crime? Uh... I'm tempted to say, of course I don't, but I feel like I get penalized. You know what? We'll go with, of course I do. I, I'm, I'm worried I missed a piece of evidence in the testimony, but we'll see if that matters or not. I've got a great reason to make my claim. And I suppose you'll be telling us all that great reason. So I'm imagining the thump could be him falling on the box if I'm working through what the game is trying to tell us so far. So he would have seen like the post-murder scene kind of thing. So I'm guessing that's where we're going. Since why else would there be a loud thump? Of course I will. The reason is, when it's his very own testimony. What is the meaning of that, Mr. Wright? Mo said that he heard a sound like a thump of someone getting hit. Hmm, he did say that. However, Mo just stated the following under oath. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clunked the ringmaster over the head. Most made believe when he said he looked up, looked out the window upon hearing a sound. There's no way he could have seen Max clonk anyone. In 1972, a crack clown unit. Is he is he quoting another show? Is he quoting A Team? I'm trying to think how the intro goes. Yeah, I think it's A-Team. I think it's A-Team. I don't know why he's quoting random shows. Whenever you answer no, you lose health. Yeah. I, I don't think I normally do, to be honest. Mr. Curls, how do you respond to Mr. White's assessment? Because we can also say we push it, but then if we don't have evidence, we also lose health. Because that's also been a thing even in this case so far. They didn't commit. These clowns promptly escaped from a maximum security clown car. Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C-Team theme to anger this court? I like how they changed it from A-Team to C-Team. No, no, no. I'm just stalling for time while I jog my memory. Great job, Nick. These types of witnesses always seem to have a selective memory. Just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Is he like an onion phoenix? Well, um... Oh, you're back from your jog. Well, it's pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much. When I looked out my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped fill in the gaps of my statement. On Von Karma... Tampering with witnesses again. So now you're saying you did not see the defendant clonk the ringmaster? Y yes When I looked out my window, the ringmaster had already checked out. Checked out? Yup, he was on the permanent vacation, as they say. Ha 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 ha. Wow, that was really not funny. Mr. Curls. Your Honor. You did not witness the actual crime. However, you still say you saw the criminal, correct? Yes, exactly. The ringmaster was slumped over and I saw someone's silhouette next to him. Very well. Then please testify, testify to the silhouette you saw. I expect the truth. You're expecting the truth after all this nonsense? Okay, I don't know why we don't just throw him out of court at this point. And if I catch a hint of a joke from you... I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Got it? Oh, oh my gosh, she's he's actually threatening to throw someone in jail? What 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 happened to all the other cases? <laughs> what what th this is the first time you're threatening to jail someone for misconduct? Wow. The clown of all things. Not not the person whipping people in court or the straight up falsifying of evidence or anything else. Wow. That is truly something. Got it. 
You know it's bad when not even the judge likes the character. I think that's the problem, too. I think some of these characters are just written to be unlikable. <laughs> like, some of it is supposed to be, like, somewhat funny unlikable, but no, they just come across as really unlikable. Wait, this is where the meme came from? I don't know what you mean. I don't follow memes, though. It was a bit far away, but that shadow could have only belonged to Max. There's no doubting it, especially since I saw his uppity symbols. You're not a clown, you're an entire circus. Oh, I mean... I I, I don't know if it's in a meme. I mean, that is a, fra that is a thing. Outside of Phoenix, right? His silk hat. That... Seriously, the black cloak. Seriously, do we have to go to his three symbols? Does that look like a black cloak? And he didn't even mention the roses. What a fail. His, his face was silhouetted, but there was no doubt it was him. His cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. Hmm. It does seem as if the defendant was at the scene of the crime. It took the clown long enough to get his facts straight. But whatever, this should finally be good enough, yes? It is decisive testimony. Was Max really at the crime scene that night? He said he wasn't there. We have to believe in that. All right, Mr. Wright, commence your cross-examination. Well, I'm not even gonna bother. I mean, first of all, he only named two symbols. So, big fail on that one. Let's present the poster that we stole. So, I guess we're throwing uh, Maya under the bus here as well, since we did not get this poster legally. But whatever. Objection! Objection. You say you saw all of Max's uppity symbols? I suppose so. The silk count the cloak, right? Mo. Everyone knows that Maximilian Galactica has three uppity symbols. See, that was f almost funny. But it didn't come from the clown. Three symbols. Yay, everyone get ready all together now. Silk hat, cloak, white roses. What the? Who cares if he knew there were three or not? He saw what he saw. And he saw the symbols. He just forgot to mention one. He also got his cloak color wrong. Isn't that right, Mo? Do you like pie? I love pie. 3.14. Silence, fool. It responds with the whole truth. No fractions. Bang. Order, order. Mo, you didn't see the roses, did you? To be honest, there weren't any roses on the person I saw. Objection. The crime scene was dark. It's obvious it was too dark to see that kind of detail. Then you wouldn't know who was standing there. You're... You're destroying your own point. Objection! Objection. Luna said he was able to see the silhouette of the criminal's face. Not to mention the roses are white. There's no way he could have missed them. Objection! Objection. The roses must have fallen off when the defendant assaulted the victim. If that was the case, the police would have found them near the crime scene. Bang. Mr. Wright, are these white roses truly material to the facts of the case? Clearly not. He's just toying with this court. I got her on the ropes now. These seemingly insignificant facts have never failed to lead me to the truth yet. Someone is toying with the court, but it's not me. Your Honor, do you recall Trillo's testimony? There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. How could you mistake someone that cr with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Trillo saw them all. Trillo saw all three of Max's symbols. However, this witness claims there was no white roses on the person he saw. There's absolutely no doubt that this is a contradiction. 
Bang, 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 chat. Hmm. Now what am I supposed to think? One is supposed to disregard the pointless, but this... Judge, forget the roses. Think about his other testimony. The witness has stated without a doubt that he saw Maximilian Galactica. Nothing else matters. Let's wrap this case up now. Your Honor, it may be trivial, but it does not but it does cast doubt on the prosecution's case. Frankly, I have my doubts about this witness. It seems that unlike wine, the witness has not grown more mature with age. Ooh, judge with the sick burn on that one. I'm not mature. Bang. I've come to a conclusion. I'm 99% certain that this witness saw the defendant. However, my remaining 1% of doubt is quite reasonable. Um... That's not what reasonable doubt means in the court of law. That That's actually not what reasonable doubt means. There's always the more certain than not and then reasonable doubt levels of judgment and 99% is is too much actually which means that for my peace of mind i'm going to request a bit of a bit more testimony it's a very weak argument from the prosecution i mean to, it, it like if you think about what she said she says it's too dark to see the person's face then it just opens up that it could have been anybody there like, her own argument undid herself, to be honest. I'm surprised we didn't, like, pounce all over that. Well, what? If there are no contradictions in his next statement, I am prepared to issue a ruling. A ruling? Nick, this is your last chance. The Silhouette, Part 2. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no white roses that n There were no white roses that night. However, all the other symbols were there. I'm equally sure of that. Especially the silk hat. There's no way I could forget seeing the decorations on it. He was wearing it the entire time he's at the scene. Oops. Fail. Well, I'm going to present the obvious contradiction. Mr. Wright, you've got one last chance at this. Just one chance. I will not allow even the slightest hint of badgering against this witness. If you are going to prove me, prove to me there's a contradiction with Mr. Curl's statement, you better have at least a shred of evidence to back up your accusations. I've only got a single shot at this. I've got to be careful. I understand, Your Honor. One chance is all I'll need. And then I game over. Anyway, well, this one at least I don't have to think too hard. It was there the entire scene of the the entire time, except for when it wasn't, because it fell off. Percent. This wouldn't happen to be the silk hat you saw that night, would it? Oh, was there anything else I forgot to show? Yeah, okay. Saw the crime scene photo. And look at the papers. Let's formally look at the circus map, which we saw technically earlier. Uh, okay, we can't look at anything else. This wouldn't happen to be the silk hat you saw that night, would it? Yep, that's it. That's the hat he was wearing that night. No question in your mind? Exactly how would one mistake a thing like that? I see. Is there some sort of problem, Mr. Wright? Miss Von Karma, where exactly was the silk hat found? Must you always ask these questions? It was found at the scene of the crime. The c c crime scene. That means... The silk hat fell off at the crime scene. However, the witness clearly testified to the contrary. The witness stated that he was wearing it the entire time he was on the scene. No, that's not true! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! Mr. Curls! Y yes, your honor. What is the meaning of all this? Hold him in contempt. Hold him in contempt. <laughs> you were old enough to know better than to behave like this in court. Hey, that's not right. That's so harsh. What's not right here is your eyesight and your memory amongst other things. Wow, judges pop it off, chat. Let him go, chat. Let him go off. 
Why are you being so mean to me? What did I do? You're really unfunny. That's why he's not happy with you. And you lied. And you're and you're wasting the court's time. Let me guess. You just didn't like my jokes or something, right? Yes. You didn't have to go and insult my eyesight or my memory. They're both great. Are they? Seriously, why? Just because you're sitting above me doesn't mean you are above me. No matter how old I get, I'll always, always be younger than you. Wah! <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Enough of these childish outbursts, Mr. Curls. Who do you think you are? Throw him in jail. Throw him in jail. Judge is doing the wrong kind of judging. That's also true. But let's, it's overdue, Chad. It is overdue. I saw him. I swear I saw him. It was Max. He needed to have his roses. He's still wearing his dumb silk hat. I'm telling the truth. He's turned into a bratty little kid. It's pitiful, isn't it? He left the scene wearing that dumb silk hat. He was there. He left the scene? What's the matter, Nick? There's something I've been mulling over for a while now. Mo? What do you want? He just said he left the scene. Exactly. How did the murderer leave the scene of the crime? What? He, um, he went... What do you mean, how did he leave the scene? You can't ask me that. Objection! Objection. Mr. Phoenix Wright is badgering the witness, your honor. Objection. Objection! This witness's testimony is so full of holes, Miss Von Karma. Pro Protest is useless. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's reread this with the correct punctuation. This witness's testimony is so full of holes, Miss Von Karma's protest is useless. There we go. Corrected the comma. I shifted it mentally for some reason when I said it. Gah. You've got a point. Let's hear what the witness has to say on this matter. Is that all right with you, little guy? Don't talk to me like I'm a little baby. Besides, what kind of stupid question is how did he leave the crime scene? The answer is obvious. He just turned around and walked away. Uh, oops. We know that's not true. That's what I expected you'd say. You sure that's how it happened? Say what? Huh? I'm not sure I know exactly where you're going with this. Lawyers nowadays sure do love to harp on the smallest things. Wow, he's gone. Wow. <laughs> Ultra judges here, chat. Step aside. He's ready to criticize you and break you down. Do you have any proof to counter his story as to how the criminal left the crime scene? Oh, I almost presented the map. That would have been a big mistake. Let's present the crime photo. As I already mentioned multiple times, there were no footprints. So presumably he flew. Take that. Take that. Look at this picture. The problem is the footprints in the snow. Footprints? In this photo, we could clearly see the footprints of the victim. However, where are the criminal's footprints? They aren't there. Ay 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 ay. So, Mo, exactly how did the criminal escape the scene? Welcome, Zero Mater Raider, a mystery, says Zero Raider. Indeed. Um, he, uh... Your Honor, this witness has already proven his testimony is completely unreliable. I move to strike all of this witness's testimony from the court record. I agree. This clown's testimony is as rickety as the clown car he came to court in. Oof. Wait just a second. You guys can't just ignore everything I've said. Oh, we've been trying to do that the whole case so far. Fine, fine. I'll tell you the truth this time. You wait a second. I think you've said more than enough for today. It didn't hurt. Sick and tired of listening to you anyways. I'll give you the real deal this time, I swear. I don't know why. I get the thing feeling things are going to get worse than they, before they get better. Bang. Mr. Lawrence Curls. Yes? The testimony you provided up until now has been false. Has not been false? I haven't lied. It's just... It's just what? It's just I was a bit confused on the bit about the criminal leaving the scene. Especially since Von Karma and her whip told me not to talk about what I really saw. Bang, bang, bang. 
Order, order. I will have order. The game is afoot in clown shoes. It's certainly a circus in the courtroom at the moment, at minimum. Francisca von Karma, how could you? At least now the judge is getting annoyed at the prosecutor instead of just being literally and metaphorically whipped. Your Honor. If you had heard the truth from this witness, you would have exactly the same opinion as I have. Wow, that is totally not for you to decide as a prosecutor. That is absolutely, absolutely cause for removal. Witness tampering galore, chat. What opinion is that? It's not funny. That's enough out of you. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. Now then, let's hear the truth about what you saw, Mr. Curls. Ah, you're not going to believe this, but it's all true, I tell you. Try not to waste our time with your idiotic drivel. The truth. Witness testimony continues. Now it's time for the next segment, Mo Knows. Everything I've said up to now has been the truth. When I looked out the window, the ringmaster was down and Max was standing above him. And he wasn't wearing his white roses, but he was wearing the silk hat. That's when I saw he... This is the truth now. Get ready for it. He flew. He jumped up and flew through the air. He flew right off and disappeared into the darkness. That's why there were no footprints. Fine people don't leave footprints. I told you it wasn't funny. Do you believe me now? Dot 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 from everybody in the courtroom. Well, that was um how do you put this into words? Maximilian Galactica is a world class magician. But to leave the scene of a crime by flying, there's no way that actually happened. You you're right. Why is she right? You believe the other witnesses. Why would you believe me? Especially since they're the best part of the story. Hmm. To be honest, this is the first time I've heard of a flying criminal. What do you think about this witness's testimony, Mr. Wright? His eyes were playing tricks. This is all a dream, right? He's telling the truth. Well, I think we can imagine that if the person or thing that was witnessed by the witness was taken away, it would make sense that the hat would fall down into the crime scene if they were being hoisted. So we'll say he's telling the truth for now. What he just said was so strange. I don't think he would have made it up. Which means that he is telling the truth. That's what I think. Nick, wait. That means that Max actually used magic. Yikes, you're right. Ow. Only a foolish looking fool could be fooled by such a foolish fool's foolish dream. Don't be ridiculous. Magic does not exist. <laughs> Just spirit channeling. That's totally real. Bang. Right, chat? I suppose I will let you all in on my thinking regarding this matter. The criminal disappeared into the sky. I'd love to believe that, but I just can't wrap my head around how that could actually happen. Ropes, judge. Tight ropes. You imbecile. If you disregard a need for proof, Miss Von Karma's case is sound. However, I've got the feeling that this case is in dire need of more investigation. This is the first time the judge has ever done something other than agree with the prosecutor or go, Whoa, what am I doing here? I wonder what happened in those six months chat. Do you think somebody had a chat with him or something? Dot 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 exclamation mark from Von Karma. Like, think about it this way. Every other time the case has been extended, it's because Von Karma's obsessed with perfection. But now she actually wants it to end, even though it's not quite perfect. And now the judge is all over it, which is interesting. I don't know if that was intentional, or they just forgot how he acted. I don't really know. Thus, I will conclude today's proceedings at this point. It's an undisputed fact the criminal left no footprints at the scene. Tomorrow, 
I want us to find out the reason behind this mystery of mysteries. Um... Uh... Uh... I believe that's enough for today. Court is adjourned. Bang. December 29th, 2.33pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. Hey, sweeties, what in the world is going on? That's what I want to know. They say the criminal flew off into the air and disappeared. Max, I can't believe I'm asking this, but you didn't fly that night, did you? I know you didn't mean to ask me such a fabulously stupid question. I can't fly whenever I please. It's not that easy. But it looks so effortless for you on stage. It's not that simple. I'm actually not flying on stage. I use invisible wires and have them hoist me through the air. Wow, you told me the secret to your magic. I mean, isn't that super obvious? No, I broke the first rule, the cardinal rule, the only rule. I'm sorry, Max. Made you break a magician's creed to never reveal the secret to their tricks. Nick, what do we do now? All we have to do now is hope we can find the flying criminal in court tomorrow. Great idea. Let's do our best and catch this sucker. To be continued. Okay, chat, let's stop here. I think we made a decent amount of progress in the story so far. We got through the first trial phase, finished first investigation. That sets us up for a nice additional session to potentially clean up the case. So let's chat a little bit. So how do we feel about the case so far? It is a train wreck travesty of very questionable writing, morals, age differences. It's just really creepy all around. This case is pretty creepy. I mean, you have like the 30 year old man hitting on the 16 year old trying to propose to her with the puppet. And then he doesn't really disassociate his puppet personality from himself. So he also has a lot of actual like real serious issues. <laughs> since he refuses to drop it in both court and otherwise. We have the insanely unfunny clown. Um, so that's something to deal with. We have Regina, who seems, quote, pure innocent and like, no, a pure innocent child, which is really not great words to use when they're talking about literal marriage to her. And other things, it just comes across as creepy. Especially since she doesn't seem to really recognize that her father's dead. Like, that, there's just something wrong, chat. Like, I don't know why they went with this approach for this case. But it's pretty disappointing. I will say, though, sadly at this point, though, chat, I think this is where the mystery for me was resolved. I pretty much knew after this particular portion who did it <laughs> based off of the thing that happened in trial. And I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. So we'll continue through. There will be no mystery for me. But from the standpoint of the rest of the case itself, it's, uh, hmm. It's been interesting. <laughs> but not in the way the game probably intends. I mean, I guess the only plus side is that Pearls isn't stepping in and transforming into a busty woman. Which is also really concerning whenever that happens. But from that standpoint, uh... At least we managed to get through the case without having somebody channel Mia. Let her spirit move on, please. But unfortunately, it's Phoenix, right? She'll probably come back. It's, it's inevitable, chat. They can't help themselves. So for now, we'll, we'll take the small wins where we could get them. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been an ordeal. So let's take a break, and we will do our best to finish the trial next time. And let's go ahead and say goodbye to the people watching on YouTube slash The VOD. So if you did watch at this point, thank you again for watching. It was certainly a bit of suffering on my part <laughs> to get through some of that really awkward dialogue. It was just like, oof. Big oof on the writing. I know there's some cultural differences, but even then, potentially the co-workers probably literally presumably grooming her at a young age into marriage. Just, it, it, I don't think they thought about the implications, or if they did, I'm very concerned about the writing for Phoenix Wright. So hopefully they replace the writers in some of the, the future games and cases. Uh, but for now, we're going to say goodbye, and hopefully see you again in the next part.